Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Let's motions are carried. Yeah. Would everybody please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thanks. I think so. I haven't heard from this chair. It's like horrible. I'm going to fall off this chair. <laughs> Tipping or something? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, we have to do approval of the agenda, and there's um, two things I'd like to add on to the agenda, and um, actually possibly three things. Um, I need to add Burley Road onto the agenda. Um, we'll explain what that's all about. Um, we've got a few um, um, bicycle head resignations and we have recommendations to reappoint to appoint two more people from the chair of the committee so I'd like to just add that and um, we we're going to be asked to have a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of the um, contract contract discussion so with those um, and I'm going to change the order just a little bit to lump the stuff that we need Dave Clouser for yep. um, so with those changes do I have a motion so we'll, to do I have a second uh, can I just add one sure. more thing though is just that uh, I would like us to continue a little bit of the discussion of the properties that are not on the town map, particularly since we have Dave Clouser here. So sure. Okay. So I'll can put we the, just have the sure. Uh, okay. So town map additions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, do I have a motion to accept the agenda as amended? Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion so carried. Okay. Um, public input. Would anybody like to speak? Now what you need to do is identify yourself for the record and then go up there so the camera can pick you up on the microphone and catch you. Okay? Thank you. Um, and so it's nice to see some new faces at the uh, at the town. <laughs> Until we hear what you have to say. <laughs> I've already spoken too soon. But it's always nice to see you. How bad you want to be? Church Street. Okay. And I've given copies of this letter to everyone on the board. Um, a letter was sent to us on May 6, 2013, by the town assessor's office. It was sent to a P.O. box number only slightly different from the one we use. Uh, the post office managed to route it to us despite the error in the address. Um, the letter indicated that our current legal address was 42 Church Street. We assumed that someone had made a mistake, not only in the mailing address, but in the street address as well. So we sent a letter of correction to them. I have included a description of our property, which I won't read out loud because it really is boring. But in the back of my mind, I'm wondering if somebody has somehow mismatched the section block and lot with that particular description. Because since 1889, our property has been designated as 44 Church Street. We have resided there for 30 years at 44 Church Street, and we have that listed in numerous legal documents and contracts for service. When we have needed emergency services, they've been able to find our house. We've got two big fours on the house, it's pretty clear. In the most recent communication from the town of New Paltz assessor, it was asserted that after 125 years, our address <laughs> has been changed to 42 Church Street. We protest this. Changing one's address involves considerable time and expense. Our, re our residence is referenced in our mortgage, wills, and trusts as 44 Church Street, New York. No offense to the lawyers here, but you never ask a lawyer how he's doing because it's gonna cost you. Um, I don't wanna have to go through the expense of changing those documents. Numerous legal documents identify us as residing at 44 Church Street. Various utilities are delivered and identified on bills as 44 Church Street. Considerable time and expense face us if our address is changed. Not to mention dealing with all of the mail that will come to 
44 Church, 42 Church Street, an address that has been occupied by students the entire time we've lived there. Um, you know, that's a lot of additional sorting for us to do. We request that our address remain what it has been for the last 125 years, 44 Church Street. Should the town of New Paltz insist on the change, we then request that you reimburse us fully for all legal expenses incurred in making such a change and that you pay us a reasonable hourly rate for the time we are going to spend changing our address with the many companies that deliver services to us at that address. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will look into it because this is the first I've heard, and so I have no reason why. Don't even know that it was done, and so we will look into it right away and see. Okay, there was something mentioned about the 911, 9 you know, 911, but they change. That was a very long time ago when they did. When they changed people's addresses in streets. Yeah, and years and years ago, so that doesn't. Uh, and they left us at 44. But there is. We're, we're going to look. I'm, I'm yeah. going to look into this. Okay, Kevin. Yeah. Is, Kevin. Kevin Barry is agreed I mean, to take it. Anything can happen to keep us at 44 because yeah. I mean, I'm looking at serious. No, no, no. Money. We we understand that we get it done. I mean, not a problem. We just we're saying we're all flabbergasted. Thank and you. and so and. Well, what happened to 42? They changed that address too. No, no, that's still 42. Okay, so there's so, 240. So, so, but I would like to acknowledge, I just would like you to acknowledge yeah. that you have a councilman who's offered to help you, but I'll, he happens I'll, to be a lawyer and he's not billing you. <laughs> Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, volunteer. No, you volunteered, not me. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll look into it for you. Okay. okay, great. And I'll be out of town for a week. <laughs> Well, she'll say, I'll send it to 42 and we'll let you know what happened. <laughs> Could you do me a favor on this? Copy? Kevin, can, can you, you talk into the microphone? <laughs> would you write your phone number on here for me? Yes, I will. And I'll also write our mailing address because okay. we use the PL box. 44, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do 42 or 44. Please deliver it to the Silverbergs, <laughs> which the mailman probably knows where you live, right? <laughs> okay, are you going to speak? I'd like to. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'm Donald Silverberg, and I would like to support the remarks that have just been made by my better half and remark that if the reason that might be given in the future for the change that has been intended, uh, the availability of uh, emergency vehicles to enter in the new dwelling behind our place at 46 Church, Church Street, that uh, that 46 Church Street remain the address. My understanding is that house might be pulled down. Whether it's pulled down or not, 46 Church Street could remain the address for the entire area, including the buildings behind, with the sign put up indicating, as in the case of Orchard Heights, that there are uh, buildings behind, attainable by a driveway. Thank you. Thank you. Don, thank you very much. What? Would anybody else like to speak during public input? Hector Rodriguez, our county legislator. Thank you. Hector Rodriguez, 69 Main Street. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's actually changed in 10 years. We'll let you know. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I was here with better news. Um, Today, uh, many of us participated in a press conference with regards to, excuse me one second, apparently this is making noises. Is that all right now? All right. Yeah, he, he does everything else, I just figured, you know, close the loads. <laughs> um, we participated in a press conference calling upon Assemblyman Kevin Cahill to allow the sales tax for Ulster County, the temporary sales tax, 1%, to be approved uh, up in Albany. The assemblyman has been basically blocking the ability of the county, and by the county I mean all of us, by the way, not just the county government, I mean all of us who share in sales tax, the city of Kingston, the town of New Paltz, all the other towns in Ulster County, as well as the county um, Right now, our, our uh, other senators, Senators Larkin, Senators uh, Ketchik, uh, Bonasek have been su supporting Ulster County being able to have 
what has been basically for every two years a generally accepted thing, which is a 1% temporary tax above the 7% base. Now, we use this money to offset property taxes. I mean, th th this is a thing that is very valuable for all of us. It's something that we take into consideration when we're preparing our budgets. It's something that we actively pursue by promoting tourism in our area, by having other people come into our area, spend a little money, and help to offset the property taxes that we all bear for keeping our community so nice. Well, let me back up a little bit. Uh, the Assemblyman uh, has put in his own version, which is how he's able to block the sales tax extension. And within his version, uh, he has that he wants hey, county hey, holster. Hey, I'm just going to interrupt. You, you, uh, the, the sales tax was put in by Assemblyman Scotados back in February. And this I, is a I, new. I, I, okay. I, I, I was, okay. You just jumped into a blocking. You didn't say that one had already been. No, no, no. It was okay. But this is, this is Sorry. It's partly where I'm going. Okay. So, uh, so Ulster County back in February. I'll, I'll start with that point. So that you want to jump off that. Um, in February, the, the county legislature unanimously approved uh, a home rule request to Albany for this 1% uh, sales tax, additional to the 7%. Uh, Assemblyman Spartatos uh, was carrying it in the assembly. Uh, Senators Larkin and Katchik were carrying it in the state senate. Seems like a, a fairly pro forma thing that's happened for pretty much the past 20 years. Um, the temporary sales tax, the you know, farther back, the temporary sales tax was actually put back in, uh, back in 1993. And I believe the chairman of the legislature back then was Jerry Benjamin, um, just for a bit of history. So between February and now, the Kevin Linke Hill has decided to try to block our, our request. And he's doing so on, under this theory that. The, the county should take over safety net, what we would call welfare, but what we call safety net um, for the, of the county and the purpose of New York State. Now, he claims that the towns came to, that supervisors came to him with regards to wanting this relief. Now, what he fails to take into account is that the county of Alter is already working on taking over the safety net. In last year's budget, a budget which, by the way, uh, was 0.2% lower than the previous year, Ulster County took on the first third of, of safety net costs that the towns had to the tune of $1.7 million. We are currently this year prepared to act on taking over the second third of safety net, and the year after we'll take on the full amount. So we're already committed towards taking over safety net. We're just doing so over a three-year period. And we've been working with the supervisors <laughs> so, that's, that's, yeah, that's that little bit of acknowledgement. No, so, so we've been working with the supervisors with regards to this issue. But for whatever reason, the assemblyman seems to think that he knows better and that he's going to just kind of just stick this down our throats. Now, at the press conference today, we had the mayor of the city of Kingston, who probably had the largest safety net number uh, in the entire county. We had supervisors in it. Uh, we had Supervisor Walsh. We had uh, Supervisor Carlson was unable to make it, but also offered comments. And Supervisor Carlson is a supervisor of the town of Wawartsing, which has the second highest safety net number in Ulster County. So on our side, you've got the county, county government, county executive line, the legislature, as well as the town supervisors, all calling upon the assemblyman to carry this 1% sales tax, something that we view as vital for all of us at all of our levels of government. Because of that $22 million, a portion of that comes right back here to the town of New Paltz. Actually, Susan, you actually may have the number from the press conference. Well, I, they gave me the number, but I wasn't. they gave me two numbers, and I wasn't sure. So I'd rather. Do you remember one of them? One was 153000 and one was 40000 <laughs> so no, 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 you know what that is? That 40000 I, I bet, is probably, that might go back to the village. Maybe, maybe that was that it. Maybe, so it was under 53,000 yeah. and then 40,000. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure that, if we give any back to the village. But, no, but uh, that might be that. Might be that. Yeah. But that that's yeah. my assumption. Well, that but anyway, was, so, um, so at the end of the day, that's $153,000 that's not coming back to this community. Now, the session ends tomorrow. No, it ends today unless they decided to extend they're, it to tomorrow. Uh, they're probably going to be extending it to tomorrow because mm -hmm. we're not alone. There actually are several other counties mm -hmm. that have this requested. Mm -hmm. But we're already at the 11th and a half hour. We're at the 11th hour and 45 minutes. Um, you know, it, it's 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 terribly troubling to me that we can't get the assemblyman to apparently carry home rule requests. I mean, that that just seems to be his mo at this point. Um, 
But what's really troubling is that you've, you've got a situation where you've got $22 million at stake for all the different levels of government, and you've already got the supervisors working with the county to solve the very problem that Kevin claims is, is, is there. So at this point, I just wanted to basically just give you that quick update. I apologize for the rambling. I'm still a little bit out of it, I guess, from, uh, from dealing with all of this frustration. <laughs> I try going to the gym, but it's, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we need your help. We need, we need every citizen, we need every, every council person to be calling up to Kevin's office at this point and to really just demand he back off. We're not even asking for him to support the sales tax. We just want him to stop blocking it because we have Assemblyman Scartados from the neighboring assembly district, who also represents Ulster County, also lives in Ulster County. And we have Senators Larkin and Katchik carrying it in the Senate. So we don't necessarily need Kevin's vote, but we need Kevin to stop blocking this. And, and that's the real travesty here. So thank you. I don't know if you have any questions. I was just going to say, does any board members have any questions or? Can we elaborate further or? Just the rationale for blocking it. 1% equals $22 million? Yeah. All right, so what's the rationale for forcing local property owners to absorb additional costs when uh, you can raise money another way? What's his, I don't understand what his reasoning is. I think that may be a good reason to call him because honestly he, he, has, not, he has not truly shared that with us. He, he's made a claim um, that supervisors came to him with regards to this issue. However, as Supervisor Simmitt pointed out uh, at today's press conference, uh, whereas County Executive Hine shows up every month to the meeting of the of the supervisors, uh, all, all the supervisors get together at Ulster County periodically. We meet every uh, month. Hmm? We, meet, we meet every month, the, oh, third, every month. Okay. the third Wednesday or something, every month at 8.30 yeah. in the morning yeah, for the, like two hours. The assemblyman has never been to that. What, what would he say? is the benefit to local residents under his blocking theory. What's, I, I, what's I, I, the, I'm not here to speak for him. I, I, I do not know. So nobody has articulated what his thinking is? No. No. What, what I can say is I happen to have been up in Albany um, these past two days for other reasons, and um, Assemblyman Scotados came over to me to talk about it, Assemblyman Lopez came over to talk to me about it, but Assembly Cahill never once came over to me to talk about it. So is this a and what, and what Assemblyman came in with Lopez and Scotados were saying was how upset they were that they put the, that um, Assemblyman Scotados put it in February, and three days before the end of the session, new legislation was being put in to block it, and um, they were really, really upset. And so, you know, they were talking to me about it throughout yesterday. Did, did any of them articulate? They the cannot, issue? they don't understand it for the life of them. And because it's been all happening sort of behind the scenes up in Albany, you know, it, it's a thing where at, at this point it, it needs to be exposed. And uh, I, I'm assuming he'll have to go answer to all of us at some point. Now, there's also this rumor, and I hate passing along rumor or, or hearsay or anything like that, but there's this rumor that the assembly will, will, go, uh, will go into session oh, right. in November, um, special session. That may or may not, by the way, be true. We, we never know with the, with the uh, state assembly. Um, but even if they go back into session in November, it means that the county will lose somewhere, and I've heard two different numbers, somewhere between two to three million to eight million dollars by that delay of instituting the that that one percent sales tax. So the tax rate will go down to seven percent temporarily, and then back to eight once yeah. it's approved. So you lose yeah. that delta. Okay. Yeah, and, and and that's and that's also going to be resulting in, in significant cuts. I mean, it's going to be resulting in cuts at the county level in terms of services, in terms of uh, employees, and in terms of the very things that we're talking about doing, like taking over the next third of seeing that. Well, maybe well, Kevin is thinking about writing the check himself. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't realize he was that that so wealthy. Do, can, do you? Do you know um, what will happen if there are two competing bills on the floor? How, what happens? Uh, I believe, to my recollection, I mean, uh, they have to then go and resolve this at some point. I, no, I, think, it, don't I, think, I think what will happen, no bill comes to the floor 
they won't let both bills come to the floor. Let me put it to you that way. Nothing comes to the floor without it being approved by leadership oh, to oh, come to the floor. I apologize. I thought you meant the Senate bill and no, the no, Assembly no, no. bill. You're well, talking about Star Titles' version. Right, right, right. right, right. And, I apologize. Right, and, and as Susan's saying, they, they won't, they'll only let one out. Mm -hmm. they, they don't let, they, they don't let what, both what, out. I, what I was told by Assemblyman Scartados was that Assemblyman Cahill went to Senator Larkin, asked Senator Larkin to amend his bill to reflect what the Assemblyman Cahill wanted, and Assemblyman Larkin said, you get it passed through the Assembly first, your changes, then come back to me, and then I'll make the changes to my bill, but I'm not making my, the changes to my bill to accommodate you. And so Senator Larkin refused to do it. And so right now, you know, you have Scartados' bill that was introduced in February. It hasn't come to the floor for a vote yet. Now you've got these competing bills that Assemblyman Kale is putting in. It's going to have to be worked out behind the scenes to see what comes in. Some of the real concern is first that Assemblyman Cahill is such a senior assemblyman that he has a lot more standing in a way, and that in, that counts in Albany. So there's a little bit of I mean, concern well, about. We all, we all know look, the, the the speaker holds an iron grip over what goes to the floor and what passes and what doesn't pass. And if he's listening to Kevin Cahill, then that's the direction that you know that he's going to try to move this thing. Unless for some reason the speaker decides to go in a different direction. And the speaker's dealing with his own problems these days, so I imagine he's something for friends. So. And the, the, just the one last thing is when it was commented today that you know they might go into special session in November. They try not to go into special session because they plus money. They're all back home. They've got to have real compelling reasons to come back into into um, into um, special session. I don't see anything that's been left on the table this session that would force them to come back for a special session. And last year they were talked about going back into a special session. They never did. It never happened. Why would you so, come back to do something you should do today? Thank you. I said that exactly. The press conference so, today was my comment was, if you're prepared to do it in November, why are you doing it today? And why are you having the county lose anywhere from three to eight million dollars? For what so, reason? So should our letter that the town board is going to compose tonight go to Shelley Silver? Is that? Um, I, 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 I might send it to both. Well, if we are going to do that, we're going to add it to the agenda. We can. We'll have to do it tonight, and then we'll have to. I guess probably type it up and fax it up tonight, like make sure first thing in the morning it gets there because it's literally, yeah. if they don't go to session tonight, and I don't know if they're staying till tomorrow, yeah. um, you know, and if they don't, exactly. if, you know, well, if they might be there till 9, it, 10 o'clock tonight. It's so. a two sentence letter. Yeah. The town of Ulster County supervisors did not request this delay in collecting sales tax, and please submit the Assemblyman Scotato's bill to the floor. That's pretty much all I mean, we have to say. I mean, I can say I go to pretty much every supervisor's meeting. I did miss the last two, um, but I've and we talk about it all the time about this, you know, the safety, you know, the safety net takeover with the county, the election cost takeover. So it's always discussed, and like, um, you know, and and County Executive Hine is there every single month at every single meeting. So there is interaction with the supervisors. You know, that's not a problem. Yeah. I mean, but I've we, never heard that. I've never heard. I've never heard the supervisors. At the very least, I mean, in terms of. In terms in terms of the safety net issue, you know, we understand the need, which at this point is that the, the county take over the, you know, the second, third. Well, you know, we want to make sure that we're in a financial position to do that, but we are ideologically committed to doing that, and that's, okay. that, and that is where we're at as a legislature. However, what the assemblyman is doing is basically saying that somehow he knows better than the supervisors of, mm -hmm. of Ulster County and the legislature. county legislature, and apparently the executive. Okay. There, yes. Okay, so I would like to add. Well, can I just ask Hector? In Mike, Mike Hines been looking to continue to reduce the budget. So this would he would have to raise. Oh, uh, in terms of about thirty nine percent tax increase. If we are, if we end up that, that, that would translate to a tax increase if the math is correct. So of about thirty nine percent. How would he? How would he be supporting a tax increase in Ulster County? If you could just put it on the sales tax, because so, the money's got to come from somewhere. Somewhere we got to come up with 22 million. Well, and, and, and this is the issue. Meaning that 22 million, by the way, um, you know, three million of it goes to um, Kingston. Goes to Kingston, and I forget how the breakdown fully goes with the remaining. What's well, a good uh, couple hundred thousand that go to the county? Yeah, towns. yeah, yeah, goes to the tax. Um, and it varies by it varies by population. Um, so it means that we're we're going to have to have. 
we're going to have to mess cuts. That, that's what's going to come down to. It means like things like the road patrol are going to be on the table. It means things like, for example, even though Golden Hill is being transitioned to a private uh, uh, owner, um, right now we're actually paying, we're still paying in, during the course of the transition period for all the nurses who are there. We're going to have to talk about things like, like, like getting them completely off this year, this calendar year, um, as opposed to allowing for that full you know, transition. So, I would like to request that we ask uh, Legislator Rodriguez to draft a three-sentence letter, just because I'm concerned that by the end of the night, um, and I would like to add that to our agenda, to it'll at least give us something to work with. You make this. Yes, she will. So, so, <laughs> don't you want then, your and then smartphone? It, and then after we get done with it, you can go into my office. You can type it up, and then we can fax it or email it or do whatever. Is, is, is there a computer upstairs? Yeah, like, just go into my office. Hey, let me write something down for you. Okay. I, I, I've never had to do this before. What's okay. That? This is, Kector, this is a password you have to put in to get into the computer. Aaron has a question. Uh, okay. okay. I can I can remember it. Is, okay. is, is, is that case sensitive or not? Um, I don't think it is. Okay. No, I think it's all lowercase. Aaron? I'm just not clear of what um, Assemblyman Cahill's bill is proposing. I think he's blocking it. What is he trying okay, to do? Okay, uh, and, and I apologize for not being clear enough. So back in February, um, Assemblyman Scartados put in the standard home rule request for that additional 1% of sales tax. Assemblyman Cahill approximately somewhere, I guess, five days ago or four days ago, approximately four days ago, um, put in his own version, which would allow the county to collect that additional 1%. However, the county would then be committed to taking over the full cost of safety net, or what most people would understand to be welfare. Um, so it's sort of like, you, you know, well, yeah, we'll give you this 1%, but you're going to be spending millions of dollars out of that 1% just to be able to, to get the 1%. And you've already done a third of the safety We've net. already done a third of the safety net. how much? 1.7 million dollars. Now the reason why that's not a hard number is that it's a number, you know, safety net can go up and down. I mean, it depends on whether people are going on welfare or getting off or, or whatever the case may be. So um, it, it's, it's a number that, that fluctuates. So the next third is going to be more than 1.7 million dollars. We don't know what that number, that final number actually is. It might be 1.8, it might be 1.9. But we'll we'll probably get closer to that number as we get closer to October. And and Erin, I'll just point out in last year's budget, I didn't do the you know the budget last year, but in last year's budget, the safety net figure that was in the budget for town of Newport alone was sixty thousand. But actually by the end of the year it was actually one hundred twenty thousand dollars, of which we didn't there was sixty thousand dollars that was not even allocated into the budget that we had to find out find in our existing budget, sixty thousand dollars to pay for the increase in safety net just in Newport alone. So, so I mean, from the town. My, my question is, you're talking about twenty-two million dollars and approximately two million. Well, I mean, how much would it cost you to take over safety net right now? Four million. I'm trying to get his rationale. It would be about four million more. Yeah, so you, you, you say somewhere, million. somewhere, somewhere between, you know, perhaps somewhere between four and five million, because 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 we don't I mean, I'm sure. Again, if I was a other county, I'd go get you the number. But um, but it's, it, it's in that range. It's how is that, that right How is that four or five million funded now? Well, right now it's being borne out by all of the by all the towns. The way the way New York State does does safety net is as follows, right? You know, other states they fully just use the federal money from Medicaid and that's it, right? The state takes in the Medicaid dollars, but what they also do is they then have the localities pay half the amount. Now that's also paid for the expanded programs that we all you know love, things like Child Health Plus and, and uh, Family Health Plus and, and other programs that, that New York State does. Along with, of course, it's being a larger state, right? You know, we'd be a larger number. Um, but what happens in Ulster County specifically is that that cost has been borne by the towns. So half and half. Years, well, well, that that remaining half is borne by the towns. The county had no, you know, didn't pay for any of it. And we are the only county in New York State that actually operates in that fashion. Now, what happened last year was the county committed towards an eventual takeover of, of this program, and we're planning to do it to do so over a three-year period to stage in those costs, which makes a lot of financial sense for our level of taxation because you don't want to kind of have it all hit at one time. So we did that first third, which is 1.7 million dollars. 
So we are planning this year to do the next third. It may be 1.8, it may be 1.9. We're, we're, you know, we're not, I'm not sure because I don't have that number. Um, so yeah, so it, it's, it's going to be in that $4 million range, something like that, to, to basically take over the entirety of the program. Okay. I, I still have a question. But okay. I'll, I'll ask you about it afterwards. Okay. 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 So, I, 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 I'll, I'll just answer. I'll try, I know what you're getting at, and I'll try to. And I'll just the, answer. Where's the other piece? Well, the, the one thing I want to say, Erin, is I understand from a math perspective, you're saying. You know, $22 million versus $4 million. You know, but, but and the point is, you know, in a sense, it's $4 million versus 22. But the point is that you don't do policy and budgeting in this manner, okay? Yeah. Every two years, this request goes in. Every two years, Kevin does not carry it, okay? Tom Kerwin had carried it in the past. Frank Stato has carried it when he was done, okay? And Kevin just stayed out of it. He, he just stayed out of it. Um, this year, Frank Zitato has carried it again. He put it in in February. You don't, three days before the end of the session, all of a sudden call up the county and say, with a gun to your head, I'm not going to carry it if you don't do this. That's not how you plan, you budget, you do policy. It's not what you do. So basically, in a sense, here mathematically, you know, if somebody's got to cry uncle, you know, obviously the county is going to be the one who has to cry uncle, but at the end of the day, this is not how you run government. This is not how you work together. And why the purpose three days, you know, if you wanted to do this, back in February, have the conversation, talk to the county executive talk to the towns, figure it out, work something out. But three days before, you know, you just don't all of a sudden drop something on, call up the county and say, this is what you have to do or I'm pulling $22 million. It, yeah. it doesn't work yeah. that way. Because because the repercussions end up happening in different ways. I mean, it's not just, I mean, admittedly part of this is, of course, we have a 2% property tax cap the same mm -hmm. way that you guys do. So, you know, it, it's not as if that goes away. But on top of that, remember, you, you're talking about with, with regards to safety net, there are towns that have needs. And there are towns who are basically net outflow when it comes to safety net. So, you know, places like Woodstock that don't have a high safety net number, but are actually one of the highest tax communities in our entire county, they actually end up bearing more of that cost. And then it gets into the issues of are they at full value, meaning how those residents actually get taxed. So the loan is a of, complicated issue. Yeah, exactly. It okay, so without getting into far reaching, no, no, and I apologize right. for getting into the minutia, but it becomes a thing where it has far reaching consequences. It's not just cut as, it's not just as cut as dry as that. And the fa and Kevin knows that. He served in the county legislature for what, four, six, eight years, I forget. Um, you know, so it's not as if he doesn't know what he's doing. So as Susan said, this is not how you do policy by holding gun to somebody's head or holding holding hostage. And it ends up hurting the county, it ends up actually hurting the towns at the end of the day. I mean the city of Kingston stands to lose that three million dollars. That's gonna have huge repercussions for them. You know, the town of New Paul, somewhere, I guess, what, $150,000 was estimated. Which is a lot. You know, which it's is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. so. And I guess just the last thing, Aaron, Sorry. is just with, oh, with also the cap, because the 2% cap, that $4 million, you know, the $4 million or $6 million that they would have to assume now, well, you know, then it forces them at this moment to extend the cap because they don't know the implications of where they're going to cut to, you know, you know, so, you know, they're trying to do it from a practical perspective of how do we help the towns and what do we do in the county to make this work. You need time to work this all out. And this is not the way to do things. Okay. okay. Thanks, Hector. Thanks. I guess Go to my oh, office. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is there anybody else would like to speak during public input? Okay, Ira, Go ahead. Thank you. My time on bank compared to all this other stuff, but I just wanted to bring something to the board's attention. Uh, a number of months ago, uh, Time Warner Cable finally honored their contract and came before the citizens and had a citizen input where they can complain, whatever. We made this big show taking down telephone numbers and names and what your complaint was and whatever. It's been months and typical of time order. They haven't, I can't speak for anybody else on that list, but I can say definitively, they never called me back. And I doubt whether they ever called anybody else back. I just want to let you know, in my opinion, they're, you know, they're playing the typical game. Well, you know, nobody else has to know anything. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Erin? Are you speaking? I'm a okay. You okay. Well, wait, okay. Time out. If you're speaking as a resident, you need to come up to the microphone during public comment. Yes, yes you, you do. Really, really do. <laughs> you just lost your reporter's privilege. I'm getting it back. Okay, Eric. Everybody should look the beautiful outfit you're wearing today, anyway. Thank you. Um, 
village of uh, New Paltz <laughs> resident. Uh, I want to know who to contact at Time Warner. I forgot because I haven't covered town in a while. Because they got rid of Universal Sports, which is really the only network that covers <laughs> swimming, running, and triathlon, and the world trials are coming up. I mean, the US trials and world championship trials, and I can't get an answer out of them either. I call them all the time. Uh -huh. um, so, I will send you. I will send you the I name. Start okay, I will send you the name. Thanks. We do get a thing from them um, once a year saying we're, that they're negotiating their contract and there's a chance we're going to lose. You know, blah 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 blah. But we haven't been notified of anything having been lost. Oh yeah, no, we, we actually, had it. We had it. We did. We, we did get it. And um, oh, wait, frankly, I I didn't notice the loss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Almost every triathlon. <laughs> I, I was watching Downton Abbey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will send you the name tomorrow. Aaron. I mean, I, I know the name, but I'll give you the. It's Brenda Parks who you would call, but I can. Right. I remember. But I can get you the number if you need it. Well, okay. I'll start in a week and a half. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other um, public input? Okay, so we'll go to announcements and then we'll get into the agenda. Um, okay, so first, um, the announcements. Um, there's going to be a free household hazardous waste, pharmaceutical waste and electronic collection. This collection provides a free and safe disposal alternative for hazardous pesticides, solvents, household chemicals, used electronic equipment, expired and unused medications. This event is for Ulster County households only. It's going to be Saturday, July 20th from um, 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Appointment is required to participate, and it'll be at 21 South, Corner, South Pub Corners Road um, at the New York State DEC Region 3 facility in New Pools. And if you want to register, the number is 845-336-3336. And uh, we'll keep, we'll announce this until July 20th because this is important. And uh, so that's one. Would you repeat that? Sure. It's 336 um, 336 3336. And that's July 20th. And it's July 20th from 8 to 2 at 21 South Puck Corners Road. And I would suspect that Kitty might be pasting it on Facebook right this second. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to get into better form. But okay. so is this stuff like paint? No, this is actually, I mean, um, but it says hazardous pesticides. Think, oh, maybe solvents. Like leftover paint and yeah. What? Okay. Uh, okay, but it is paints and things like that. Okay, it says um, hazardous pesticides, solvents, household chemicals, used electronic equipment, expired and unused medications. So this is really, really good because. Um, and, and even better, actually, I think I believe it includes. Jeff just more, does it, I'm sorry. Doesn't it also it includes all electronics? So computers, which right. are. Right. Okay, because computers are very difficult to right. get rid of, and they have a lot of dangerous metals in them, so good chance. Does anybody want to do any other announcements before I do a couple for the records? Well, actually, you know what? Let me do this before I do the for rec the record. Uh, the um, only other announcement, though, is uh, don't forget there's a there's a dump uh, full time dump out at the police station for uh, medications. Oh, okay. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, and, and not just this. Now there is a full-time uh, box out at the police station with no questions asked. You can take any used medications and bring them out, or unused medications, I apologize, and bring them out to the police station. And right inside the front door, there's a secure box, and you can drop them in there and walk away. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a quick update on the website. I know that the website was our brand new website, which is being worked on, should have been up by now. But the, I just do a quick update that uh, our website had been hacked and it was written about in the New Post Times. It was hacked by someone in Turkey. We got it back up. We got it back up and running, and then it was severely hacked again. So badly severely hacked that we actually got a call from Homeland Security. Um, someone in Turkey posted our homepage that they'd faced, and they bragged about it. So the site was so badly corrupted the second time that we needed to take it off completely. Um, I don't said we were called by Homeland Security. The expectation was to move the content from the old site to the new one, but because we had to remove it, um, and we couldn't move the content because of the corrupt files. So if we moved it, we'd be moving the corrupt files over to the new site, and we'd be having the same problem from you know that we're trying to get away from. So that's what's detained us from being able to get it up as quick as we had hoped to, because now everything's got to be input from scratch, so it's input clean. So all this content now has to be input, and um, we just can't move it. So um, we had to reload everything. 
We expect it to be done by tomorrow. The expectation is on Monday that the employees are going to be starting to get trained on the new website. Once the employees are trained on knowing how to post all of the information, um, we'll hopefully be able to get up within the goals, hopefully by next week. We have to make a decision if we go up when we think it's ready or we just put it up knowing that we're going to do some more tweaks, but we'll have a better idea next week when we go through the training. So um, either next Thursday I can announce that it's up or um, I'll announce when it should be up, but that's where it is, that's the status, and that's why it's not up yet. And so it was something that we couldn't control, and it's been very frustrating to us, but we are working hard, and we're at the point now where hopefully we can stop the training. Erin? Yes, two questions. Um, what's the cost of having to it was six thousand dollars that we authorized, which we were. I was thrilled because when uh, Jeff and I were down, and Councilman Logan and I were down at the Association of Towns, and I had gone down there with one vision and one vision only was to find somebody who did municipal websites. And Councilman Logan and I talked to the person. They have extensive experience. They do like over 150, 200 municipal websites. And when they said the price was six thousand dollars, I almost jumped for joy because we actually put more into the budget, expecting it to be a, you know, more money. So it is called Virtual Towns and Schools. I think that's her name, is Virtual Towns and Schools. How do you know it was from the Um, because the police, Homeland Security, somewhat, somehow they told us. So I will add that um, at the Historic Preservation Commission meeting last night, um, they are facing an extra minimum of $500 to move their files over because they were all corrupted under the situation. So um, I, I don't know if other commissions are going to have similar expenses facing them, but we may find by the end of the year that mm -hmm. each one of our committee's regular documents and forms were all corrupted and um, we're going to have to pay somebody well, to fix something. And, and also, Aaron, this came across from the controller's report uh, that Susan got shortly after an office and she started working on it then. Unfortunately, it's something frequently seen in the controller's report. I know it was in uh, the Lloyd controller report also said internet security. I don't know about Gardner's, but I, I do know Lloyd. No, I think Gardner, I think if I remember correctly, the report just came out. And I think Gardner's they talked about Gardner's also. Too, yeah. Unfortunately, internet security is a problem nationwide, but I'll speak just for our part of the Hudson Valley. Almost every controller report speaks to internet security problems and uh, the company Susan and I spoke to down there, th they do a huge number of school districts and towns and villages and counties in the state and they were considered the most stable and even they got attacked. Uh, how they knew it was Turkey, I, I have no idea either, but this is what engineers that are much smarter than us do. So. so we actually, because um, what Councilman Logan was saying that in the controller's report that I got that had nothing to do with when I was here, I just inherited the report. Um, they talked about the internet security and stuff, and we actually put some more money aside. So once the new website is up, whatever we need to do to go to the next layer for security, we do have money, and the board will be taking that on once this is all done That's to figure out. Line. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we have money in, and it's something we knew we had to take on. We're just waiting to get the website under control before we took on the security of the website. But the company we hired. They actually have backup, and their backup is in a bomb-proof uh, shelter um, somewhere in New Jersey, I think, or whatever, but it's in a bomb-proof shelter, and uh, they have so much backup and so much stuff. And actually, right after Hurricane Sandy, no, Hurricane Sandy, we actually, we were off, if you remember correctly, we had no internet whatsoever, and as a matter of fact, my town cell phone, where I was getting um, up-to-the-date minute from um, the emergency services, I couldn't even get internet, you know, from, um, I wasn't getting emails from the police the fire and the rescue. So Carol had to set up a complete, you know, a whole new email address through Gmail for Rosanna, for myself, for her, for Chris, or whatever, so we could be in contact with the police, the fire, and the rescue during the storm. And you know, because the only way we could communicate was via email, and we had no email. So it's a serious issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing I will just say uh, with Kitty to Kitty with, is about um, with the bike with the um, historic preservation, with it's more of a problem for them than any other committee is because they've spent an awful lot of money to do an incredible amount of content-driven stuff relative to their um, site and to the commission, and they've done videos and they've done interactive maps and they've gotten all sorts of grants to do all this incredible stuff. So they have a very, very, very um, um, comprehensive 
section of the website, and when we were making the change, one of the things was, because they work in a different program than the town one was, so when we made the change, we were working on how to make sure we could bring the commission stuff over from the Historic Preservation Commission without costing a lot of money, and could we do it? So they were right. a you, real- You are on it, Susan. <laughs> so, so, they, so they were really, we, so that was a real concern right. and stuff, so that's why theirs is more expensive, but I don't expect for us to incur any other costs with anybody else, but the Historic Preservation is a very big issue because of all the work they've done and the great stuff they've done. So yeah, so it'll be what it is. But so anyway. Okay. So that's that. Um, and then just very, very quickly, a couple things for the record. Um, I, you know, I have a couple foils. When I get foiled, um, which is okay, it's not a problem. I just want to start like putting the foils into the record I put in. Um, so Steve Greenfield had foiled me um, on my correspondence with Dan Torres, and so I just would like to put this into the record. And um, Councilman Logan had just asked for a couple of emails that he had foiled, and so we have it um, here to just give him. So here Jeff is to share stuff, and there's just a copy that's in the record just so everybody knows. And then I just want to respond to an email from um, um, Paul Brown that was sent to other planning board members and um, um, Councilman Logan and Councilman uh, Brown, where um, it has to talk, it has to do with the UC IDA letter relative to Park Point, where the town board spent m like literally probably like four or five meetings, six meetings working on a letter that we spent a lot of time on. And um, so the letter was sent from Paul Brown to a planning board member, and it said, this is the first page of an 11-page letter stamped received June 10, 2013 by UCIDA. It is dated by the town board as having been written on April 23rd, 2013. Why the delay? It is essentially the same content word for word sent to the town planning board from the town board on January 3rd, 2013. And this is what I really would like to just address. Again, I'm puzzled by the delay. Either Susan or Carol Connolly have very poor office skills, or Susan delayed the process as long as she could. Now, what I first want to just say is on behalf of Carol Connolly, she is an incredible administrator, and anybody would be lucky to have somebody like her working with them because the work she does, the work she puts out, the way she responds to the public, and the way she stops on, stays on top of everything is quite exemplary, and I am so lucky to have her, and this town is lucky to have her. So to have her criticized to a planning board member without calling up us to find out at first what the delay or what the problem was, I really take offense at, and so I really really need to defend um, Carol because she deserves it. Um, you want to criticize me, go ahead, that's okay, but again, a phone call could have answered it. And really, um, why would I delay a letter that this board spent hours and hours and hours on? And so um, I just want to answer by saying that Councilman Logan at a meeting had asked for us to create stationery. I had inherited stationery when I came in. We just changed my name, Tony's name to my name. Didn't have the other board members on the stationery that we had. Councilman Logan asked us to do stationery with all of the names and he wanted all the board members on the letter to the IDA so it was coming from the entire board. So. Rosanna hadn't been here, Carol was away on vacation. When Rosanna came back, she worked on creating the stationery. Unfortunately, there was a glitch between myself and Rosanna, where I thought when Rosanna created the stationery that she actually was putting the letter and getting the letter out. She thought she was creating the stationery and I was getting the letter out. When Councilwoman Brown had asked at a meeting a couple of, about a month ago, um, you know, where, where's the letter? I talked to Rosanna, we figured out that it was like, I thought she did it, she thought I did it. I'm sorry, we made a mistake. We're, we're you know, we're all human, and so as soon as we found out, Rosanna got the letter out right away, and that's when the idea got it. So there was no mischief, there was no intent to hide or delay this, it was just a simple, honest mistake of communication, I apologize for that, but um, there was no insidious thing behind it, and so I wanted that on the record. So here's the email, um, and Rosanna has the facts, so um, I think I'm done with that, so now we can get into the action items. Fourth of July. Oh, okay, go ahead, Kitty. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, the 4th of July is on. Uh, July 6th. The 4th of July is on at the, four, the 6th of July. Uh, the grounds will open at 5 o'clock. I think so. Um, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, well, you know what? We're going to post it on the town Facebook site tomorrow. I think it's probably the pretty traditional lineup, but it will open at 5 o'clock. Music, I think, begins at 6 o'clock. Um, and fireworks are planned for 9.30. And at the beginning, the beginning is a child-friendly band. They're um, a wonderful child-friendly band, and then there's a bunch of kids from Kingston that are gonna be doing something that's fantastic. And so it should be it should be a very, very nice lineup, very family-friendly, and we'll have all the specifics next week, and Kitty will post it tomorrow. Okay. 
Okay, Ira? Yeah, uh, just my one question. Are you going to be using the special town handicap or are you just going to go with the sta standard handicap? You used to have special town handicap. You know, and I'm sorry, just oh, saying, you know, Susan is, in, and I think Josh produced them or someone yeah, produced them. Actually, it might not have been Josh, it was, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, no, uh, Steve Warren? Steve uh -huh. used to produce, uh, people could come and they produced, it was a very simple laminated yeah. card. Yeah, yeah. It said Town of New Paltz. Uh, I apologize, it might have been disabled, but Handicap Park, I can't remember what it, he had it's a handicap park. Okay. and they had to come to the your yeah. office okay. and they could pick it up yes. and it got stuck in the windshield. Uh, yeah. Josh might know more. It, it was, I just it know always, yeah. All they had to do was just call up and um, and just give their name. So it used to be to the clerk's office and there's yeah. always, the, the space is right across from the gate that they, but if they come in and they show they have a handicap <laughs> thing on their car and stuff. They, they no, no, no. So well, yeah. thank you for bringing I mean, that. I'm assuming you're going to put it in the same place. Right? Okay. Well, I don't know. I, no, I, I don't even go out there. I have no idea. Yeah. So I, I, I apologize. I will be away this year okay. again. So well, thank you for bringing it up, and we'll just Sorry, make sure that that gets taken yeah. care of. Okay? okay. It's not thank necessary. You. That's fine. If it was necessary. No, 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 no. Thank you for bringing it up because, uh, you know, I was not as involved last time, so I know what to follow up on. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get on to the agenda because let's get on to the agenda. Okay. Um, why don't we just um, do two real quick things before we get into the meat of some of the stuff. Um, we have to adopt a resolution designating the town clerk to receive notice of claims from the Secretary of State. Um, I don't know if you need me to really get into this. Um, it's some new state law that um, the state the state passed. Um, we got a letter from Joe Moriello. The town received an update from the Town Clerks Association advising that effective June 15th, 2013, the person wishing to sue a town will have an additional option for serving a notice of claim upon the town. In addition to delivering a copy of the notice of claim to the town clerk, the town supervisor or the attorney regularly engaged in representing the town, a notice of claim will be able to be delivered to the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State will then forward the notice of claim to the person designated by the town board to receive the notice of claim as provided in General Minnesota Law number 53. And then there's a bunch more stuff, but I don't think we need to get into it. So what the attorney was um, suggesting is that we designate um, the town clerk to receive the notice of claims from Secretary of State. So can I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Does anybody want to discuss it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. I hope, Rosanna, you accept this uh, designation. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, the only other thing real quick, um, um, we just need to set a public hearing on the towing law, um, and what I'd like to do is set it for July 18th at 7.15. That gives us time to get it into the paper and notice it. And so, do I have a motion to set the public hearing for July 18th at 7.15? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. S any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion so carried. Okay, so what I'd like to do is, um, why don't I, um, we'll do Burley Road first. Um, we need Dave for the municipal water system, for the grant for sewer six, and the Field of Dreams Pavilion, and the Burley Road. So what I'll do is let Josh come up first, because he's here for Burley Road. And I'd like to ask, um, well, I don't know where Chris went. He went into the office. Oh, okay, so let uh, Josh first speak, and then um, oh, do we need Chris here? Well, Chris knows what's going on, so he'll come back out, and then we need Dave and Chris. Yeah. I'm going to get some more to Josh, so I'll be right back. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll explain what, what I'm giving you in a minute. Or... If uh, we can do this now, yes, yeah. Kitty Jeff, if we do this now, um, then we can get um, um, Hector to go back in and get this out right now. Okay, so um, the Honorable Kevin Cahill, 
Assemblyman Cahill, we, the members of the New Falls Town Buyer, here request that you drop your demand upon the taxpayers of Wilson County regarding the 1% temporary sales tax. Your legislation does not comply with the home request of Wilson County Legislature and places our community in a, to a precarious financial position. We request you, you, that you allow the legislation offered by Assemblyman Scartados, which is companion legislation supported by the State Senate, to be voted on immediately. Sincerely, the New Falls Town Board. Everybody okay? Well, let's tell them how we really feel. <laughs> okay. It's perhaps a little stronger, but um, I guess. Maybe Anderson. He said, he said and you Hector. wanted two sentences. Uh, and, and Hector says it's a good idea. Are you seeing red? Uh, it's just. You think it's strong? I thought. What? I thought I was the indignant one at this table. I, I, you know, I think it's you, fine, but I do want to... You probably should have heard the mayor of the city of Kingston. <laughs> okay. I was calm in comparison. All right. I, I would also like to CC... Um, so Silver, uh, Sally Silver. Yeah, I'm actually going to probably just change the header and actually send it then to... I, to I would like to Silver CC well. a sem Okay, assembly I'll, person uh, so with, with, on this. With that. Oh, so you want to you want to see the assemblyman yeah. Scatados and assembly? Yeah. Game? So you want to do assembly Scatados? Catch again. Right. right. Okay. Well, that's where they know. Scatados, Larkin. Right. And who else? So, um, um, with those amendments, do I have a motion to accept so the letter? Kevin moved it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion so carried. And it's uh, Scatados, Larkin, and. Uh, it's Bonson, yeah, well, Kevin, Karen, um, it doesn't matter. Karen. No. Yeah, um, that, oh, it's Satsa? I'll do it. Yeah, don't worry. Hector knows. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I need your keys. He thought he was going to be able to leave, but uh, I wanted to take I mean, care of getting it out right now. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Apparently, I'm the secretary for the time. Above and beyond. For right now, you are. Thank you for your service. Well, Hector, if you didn't call me to come to the press conference today, you wouldn't have had to do this. <laughs> Okay, um, Josh Burley Road. Good evening. Um, so I handed you all a packet, and what's in that packet is most of the stuff that I received when I um, uh, put in a foil with the building department in the town of the South is based upon I had gotten the tip, and I was checking out to make sure it was true. It's not everything people tell you around here is true, but it turned out to be true. This won't be the first time I've been talking about Burley Road. We were talking about um, so what you have is all the papers. You'll see it's timely because what was given was a logging contract that allows uh, a company to come in and pull out trees. I'm going to read a cover letter that I wrote. I also have a letter from one of my neighbors um, because all this happened late. I'll have a petition from all the rest of the people I wrote by next week. So I guess let me read the letter that I wrote. I'm sort of all over the place, but bear with me. Um, so I'm here tonight representing myself and other neighbors on Burley Road. I only learned about the problem I'm going to speak about late last week and had to wait until this week until I got verified through the foil that I requested. Due to the time constraint, I did not have enough time to make the rounds and get a petition this week in time for tonight's meeting. The residents of our road have been concerned about the Cornell 4-H property for some time now. When they were going to put the YMCA camp um, out there, we had concerns about the ability of large vehicles to pass each other, the overuse of the road, the water table, and other issues. And the packets I've given you are the new plans by the owners to log 226 mature trees on the property, which I follow from the Assault and Scoping Department. The problems are the following. All that property is in the town of Asselpis. Burley Road is owned by the town of New Falls, with the exception of the last couple of hundred feet, which is owned by Asselpis. We own the rest, and we're responsible for maintaining the road and fixing any damage that might occur. Yet our highway has no approval rights for this project. There will be road damage. The Burley Road was not built to handle large trucks with that much weight. Even fuel trucks can do, chain, can do damage, but they must be allowed as they have fallen into commerce, which is which, which again stop. At the legal at the legal limit, a semi truck um, carrying uh, those type carrying logs weighs about eighty thousand pounds. Those trucks always carry more, and with a special permit, they can exceed one hundred thousand pounds. I believe in one study it was stated that one trip down the road by a 60,000 pound truck is equal to 10,000 car trips. The board should be aware that a report from Dave Clouser on 91611, and that's when the town was putting on the speed limit on the road, it is stated that the width of this road is approximately 17 to 18 feet, and at some locations, no shoulder exists. The standard road pavement width in New Box is 22 feet with two foot shoulders on each side. 
uh, that there are obstacles relatively close to the edge of the road. Several utility poles are located with one to two feet of the edge of the pavement. And there's limited sight, dif dis limited sight distance from most, most of the roadway. Um, the soap is holding the security money, it's not new balls. Any damages to our road would have to be claimed from the SOPIS. The only certificate holder named on the insurance company for the logger is a SOPIS. Uh, we have many children and residents who walk and bike this road. Um, we've had water standing on the road after large rainstorms in the last couple of years, and some of the neighbors feel that the logging could make it worse in the future. The town of the SOPIS did not show due diligence in processing the logging permit. Um, you'll see all in the papers in there, I'll, you know, you can find it. They did not notify the neighbors in New Paltz. They only seem to have notified the, the contiguous neighbors in the town of Asopus. Um, I have a letter from one of my neighbors whose land is contiguous to their land, and they did not receive it, and I believe there's one other property in New Paltz that's contiguous, and they were not notified. Um, the town, in their paperwork to the logger, said they need a USGS topographic map, um, and that was not in the papers, so apparently one was not turned in. Um, they also asked for a USDA soil survey map in the file, and that was not in the file either, as requested by the town. Um, I don't believe they properly did the study of the wetlands because they had a forester report. And he claims there are only two small wetlands and no other water. I don't believe that's true. You might want to ask Dave Clouser, as he inspected the land years, a couple of years ago when the camp was supposed to come in, and I believe he certainly found more than just two wetlands in there. It is troubling the town of Asopus also requires a $7,500 letter of credit, yet the owners ask them to waive that to $2,500 in the form of a check. The contract with J&J Log and Lumber Company states they are responsible for any problems, and Cornell cannot be held responsible. What we are asking for tonight is for the board to take action to keep these trucks off Burley Road. There are other roads on their property, and one of them can can take them off the property in Asopus, not New Paltz. This makes sense as someday when they develop the property, the taxes received from it will help them repair the roads from all the wear and tear. Some of our neighbors have large trucks and trailers, so we would ask that maybe you can put a 20-ton limit on the road or some other form of restriction that will keep those incredibly heavy logging roads, trucks from destroying our road. One other note, and this is only on my part that I'm saying this, not on, on part of the only other neighbors. Um, and it's the same thing I said in 2007. As long as Burley Road is the only road used for access to Usopus property, we should consider annexing it into New Paltz because we are responsible for the public safety and the maintenance of the only road being used into the property. And in an emergency, God forbid, whatever happened there, New Paltz might have to be first responded because we are much closer for any real serious problems. And if it remains in the Sopus, they get all the tax benefits and we get all the responsibility without any input about its usage and all the extra traffic it could potentially generate. Thank you. And I signed the Josh on the early real residence. And uh, I have the, the contract, which I didn't think you'd need. I have a copy of Dave's report from a couple of years ago. But basically, I think most of the thing, what you need to see is in that packet. It gives a list of the trees that they're about to cut down and, you know, how many of them, and et cetera, et cetera. So concern, does, anybody here, does anybody here know what legal recourse the town has? Lower the weight on the road. I mean, but that takes months of public hearings, and right? I'm not sure the process. I believe it's something the town board does, but there would be a public hearing. Chris, right. when we put a weight limit on uh, Shiver Town, how do we do that? Public hearing. Thank you. Board order. It was public hearing, as Roseanne said. Local law. All right. Uh, so you got to do a local law. I, I think Susan has some more information on this. Um, I don't know where she went, but you may want to wait until she comes. So, out. did we, we? I thought there was something about having to do that town wide, or did we just do it for Chipper Town? That we have they some sort of. They town wide truck routes. Yeah. That, we, was, that was something that was asked. That was something that we don't do, the county engineers do. Um, there is, there is a, a um, provision in highway laws where um, temporary exclude any vehicle with a gross weight excess of any designated weight on any axle, any wheel, axle, any number of axles, or per inch width of tire, when in the town board's opinion, the highway would be injured by the operation of the vehicle. Okay, so what would we have to do to enforce that? Can I read that, Chris? Uh, 
Are logging trucks too heavy, Chris? Logging trucks typically are very heavy. Usually carry overweight permits. Um, what, what a suggestion of mine would be is if the board would enact something, the weight limit for that road, we need to know what the road weight limit is, uh, what the road's built for. Um, that can be done by taking some core samples having them, it's not a big process, I've talked to Dave about it, um, that would give us exactly what the road is built of, how much the, um, how much weight the road can hold, and then I would say you, you have to talk to an attorney just to make sure that you're in your legal standing. Then the board could act that rule that gave Kevin, um, saying that these trucks could pop, you know, the road was not built or designed to handle that kind of weight would have some science behind the action. But they would still be able to log it just with smaller trucks. Because the logging isn't necessarily bad. The logging, I mean, you need to clear a forest to, to maintain a healthy forest, but... It's getting it out. You're right, it's getting it out as an issue, so they would be able to use smaller... Well, this is being done strictly for money. It's not being done to right, the land. Okay, but, but I'm, I'm going to assume that Cornell Cooperative Extension does have some sort of management plan here. I'm, you have, I'm hoping you have, you have to clear a forest occasionally okay. to have healthy but forests. But I, I am concerned about it, it. I don't know if seeker is required on something like this, but I would like to see more of an analysis of the ecosystems there. I mean, how do we know this isn't, a, you know, a bald eagle habitat or something? It really does seem to me like somebody from DEC or the Borough Society or somebody should get in there and see who's living there before we chop it all down. Well, the problem, with, well, the problem I can't, um, is that if the town of Lloyd already gave them the permits to start doing this. Well, it's a SOPUS, so. A SOPUS, so I'm sorry. Can, can we, can we, okay, but it is a Cornell Cooperative Extension. I, I would think they would be sensitive. Do they, still, do they still own the land? That's who signed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I should tell you this, a couple of years ago when the Y was going in and I spoke to um, I went up to inquire what was going on. I got a call from their lawyer before I even got back to Kingston. And he was a new member of their board of directors. And he said that they had no use for the land. And they, you know, they, they had almost made a deal, actually, with a, a well-known local figure, which was really scary for myself, too. And that they were just, in their mind, they're not looking to preserve it. They're looking to get rid of the land because it's of no use for them, is what I was told. And that was in 2007. Just so you know that. And the thing is, these people had a permit to start June 4th. The only reason they have not started removing the trees is because it's been too wet and they have not been able to do it. Okay. And they have permit right. license to go from 7 in the morning till 7 at night, and they think they're going to do it in three weeks. So, trucks up and down the road. This uh, affidavit of ownership says that Kimberly Wagner doesn't identify her, her position and resides at Cornell Cooperative Extension. Yeah, that makes no sense at all. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of things that are funny with that. And that he is the owner in fee of that's, all that certain, I don't know. That's why I sort of said I don't know if it's, I, I know that I used to be um, on the YMCA board and uh, the YMCA was when we were looking to get a, you know, um, they would do renovations at the school and, we, and they ended up moving them out someplace. We were looking to buy that land for a camp, right. and we met with Cornell, and they were absolutely looking to get rid of it way back in 2007. They had no need for it. So that's why I thought that they might have done something since then, and it's possible because Kitty's saying that it's in fee, that I don't think it is Cornell that's overseeing it at this point. Well, on the map, it says being the owner of the property at Cornell Cooperative Extension. I don't know, why don't we just offer uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension $2,500 to buy it? Well, if uh, I would love to do that, it would be wonderful, but um, it's not in our jurisdiction. So if we buy it, does that mean that becomes part of New Pulse? Well, Wait a minute. Like I said, I think years ago it would have been easier that we might have tried to annex it in because it's, we have the only road going in. There are, but there are roads. They, they just walk. There are roads there that are open ground and stuff, but for logging, they certainly can probably use those roads. And if you stay off the New Pulse roads, it at least preserves that road, and, and, you know, because they're, they're going to get the money out of that property. You have to look at the wall range 
the impact on new laws? I mean, not being a logger now as Dave, but on 40 acres, they're only removing 226 trees. There, there's certainly a conservation plan and fiscal motive for this. And it's certainly not going to change. 226 trees are not going to change a forest. No, the concern is not clear cutting them out. No, they're, they're not clear cutting by any means. No, it's no. the concern of, of, the yeah. ro of the weight on our roads. Oh, no, yeah, no, these trucks could destroy Burley Road, absolutely. Potentially, these could. Burley is just an old, yeah, really no. old town road that got a little bit of gravel at one yeah. point and a little bit of chip seal at one point. George Rafferty. You know, Chris budget is for maintenance, not for total restoration. And driving the skitters in and all that is definitely so going to. Do we want to set a public hearing to set a weight limit? Wait, well, we can't. Um, I mean, the problem is there's a process, which is that um, what has to happen is Chris has to go do right, a, he told uh, us that the he's boring, do the boring, which he can do right away. He's right. already like, you know, that's not a problem. As soon as he does it, um, which I think you can do it pretty soon, you said, right? Yeah, I, I called the company today to get a price. Um, <laughs> I, I could have him out tomorrow or possibly Monday, Tuesday. So, but I'm wondering, is, is do we need Joe Moriello, though, well, tomorrow well, to file something in court to ask yeah. for a stop? There's such a thing as, like, stop this action. Can we do a stop work no. order no. on our... Yeah, I, I have no idea either because... That's, that's I, what I was asking. Like, no, there's no, not, and I'm, I'm, I'm like Kitty, I'm very surprised that there is no type of action put on this. It's not a type one, type two. It's. I, I'm shocked there's no action put on this. Yeah, I don't know what his SOPUS has for a logging permit, but that's a building department. Well, it looks yeah. like it was issued. I mean, it looks like it was issued from the building department. It's hard to tell from these. Did you see that? Yes, it was the building department, Jeff. That's yeah, right. is that what it, 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 it looks like? It was done from the building department, and they're the ones that gave the logging permit. So, so can you do being treated like a ministerial permit? Right. You know? I mean, twenty-five hundred dollars to cover the whole cost of, uh, you know, putting, getting rid of all the debris and restoring all of the tracks in the forest and the driveway cut. Well, that's that's the thing. It, it in one doesn't. of the documents you're holding, it says that the usual fee that I know. is seventy-five hundred, right. which to me means this guy didn't have the money, so right. I'm just doing well, it because I want to get it. Back. I guess I'd like to make a motion uh, for giving our supervisor permission tomorrow or as soon as possible to contact our attorney to see if we can get a stop work order yeah. issued in an amount not to exceed fifteen hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars Kevin, you know, um, Kevin? Kevin's now educating himself <laughs> on not only is he a master of, of GML general municipal law he's now becoming a master of uh, highway law well, which is always looking you can ask Joe is do they have to notify, in other words, they notified everybody in Sophus who were contiguous, mm -hmm. but they did not notify the two neighbors in Newpoles. I thought that in an action like that, if they have to notify the contiguous neighbors, it would mean all of the neighbors of the property, and yet sure. they avoided it. Well, if it's done through the building department, they may have no requirement of notifying anybody. Actually, they may have just done that out of courtesy. It, it looks like this application, the login application, you and I can go up there and fill out an a login application and notify no one. There doesn't seem to be any. I'd have to go on and look at a SOPUS, but it looks like they just kind of went up and said, I need a logging permit, and good luck. Well, I understand that when they, I was told by one of the people who works in the office, when they originally came in, they didn't ask much of them, and then somebody came back and said, oh, no, you've got to get this, this, and this. So you'll see a list in there of what they're asking for, the reports and all that. There is only a report from a forester. The other soil report they're asking for, and that is not in there, and that's why I'm saying um, they didn't run a really tight ship on making sure that all their own requirements were fulfilled, and so it looks like a pretty sloppy job to me. So just in terms of process, real quick, from what I understand, working on this today, um, Chris can do the, this, the um, boring, then he has to give the results to Dave, um, and the law is such that it has to be the engineer who then directs us um, to what kind of the weight, the, road. the weight and, that the road can handle, and, 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 I guess and then that gives us the ability to then, um, to you know, set the set it, do the public hearing, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and would it be both doing it on Burley and Van Ostrin? Because you can't get to Burley obviously without getting on Van Ostrin. So you're going to trash Van Ostrin is both. also not that right, but it's hardy of a road. No, no, but we can do both. It doesn't matter. We can. Yeah, you might as well do both, right. Chris. I mean, if you can get a boring sample on Burley, you might as well do one on Van Ostrin because Van Ostrin was never 
set up really for truck traffic either. So Chris, well, I mean, even on North North Ohio, there's a weight limit between two ninety nine. Josh, can you give me the microphone? And uh, there's a weight limit between old two ninety nine and Horses End Road. It's, it's, I believe it's five ton. Then after that, the, there's no weight limit. So we can we, we can do that, but you're looking at just you, the cost for boring Burley Road um, is seven hundred dollars. So you're we do the same thing for an Olson Road. Um, you're looking at fourteen hundred dollars. And do you have that in your budget? Because you had the money in your budget for well, for, or for potentially Burley. we could go out after the logger for the money, right? Well. Well, let's. I don't, know about that. I, I don't think so either. Do, do you I, think I have an engineering but, line okay. within my budget? Yeah. That, that, that I can but use but I, I would like to send a note to the town of Asopus and say we're, we're going to have to put $1,400 into determining whether or not our roads can sustain this kind of traffic. So. Um, what do we, we don't do? think that your fee of twenty five hundred dollars is sufficient. Maybe I think I think maybe we'll because I don't know how much standing we have. Let me make a potential suggestion. Jeff is authorizing um, me to call, and I was going to try to call Joe this afternoon. I couldn't get him, but because um, I got called to a press conference. But um, um, if, you know, let me call Joe. Authorize me to call Joe in the morning. If Joe can put put a stop order on it, or he could tell you know do a stop order, then it gives us time to see what our you know what we can do before we spend all this money. So if we can get the stop order, if Joe says we have no standing, then I can call Chris up you know and say Chris get the boring done, and um, you know get it over to Dave as soon as possible. So then Dave can um, authorize it, and then we can you know if we have to have a special meeting, we we'll have a special meeting. But we're meeting next Thursday, so if we could do it next Thursday, if nothing happens. And if we need to do a special meeting to protect the road, we'll have a road protection meeting. Now, Chris, you said North Ohioville has a limit of five tons? I believe it's five tons, but only from um, 299 to Porson. After that, there's no way but they're going to be get according to their own directions, they're going to take 299 to the traffic light and make a right on the North Ohioville, according to the directions they filed. So that would put them on the part that is only five tons? Yeah, it's either five or ten. I apologize. So remember. they would exceed that probably with a flatbed with a skitter on it. That would exceed Easily. five tons. Yeah, Easily. So I mean, I don't want to be uh -huh. rude to Lloyd, but we could absolutely have an inspection point at 299 and oh. North Ohioville, <laughs> and they cannot access oh. the property. Which has been in years past, because I know I've gotten nailed in one. And you have been running trucks, so because their own directions say take Route 299.2 miles of traffic light, make this is the directions they filed, and make right on the North Ohioville. So in the meantime, we can stop them from accessing their property just because they can't destroy North, North Ohioville, right, which so actually the pretend. They have to come in from the Asopa end, or possibly in from Lloyd over Black Creek Bridge and up. Um, They're not going to want to drive those flatbeds up Black Creek. No, I agree. But yeah, they, if, yeah. If it's around a DOT stop, you'll, you'll take a cow pass. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Speaking from experience. Well, I like that plan. How do we do that? How, how do we get an inspection? Well, they have to be running the trucks. What you have to do is... This. Okay, let's listen to them. Yeah. The Council town Barry. board Free has locations. to make a determination that in the town board's opinion, the highway would be materially injured by the operation of any such vehicle. So we can exclude them, and the exclusion will take effect upon the erection of a sign on the section of the highway from which such vehicles are excluded, and a notice that such vehicles are excluded shall be published in a newspaper in the county where the highway is situated. That's when it takes effect. And then the law gives you the ability to give a logger a permit if you choose to. So we don't need a public hearing? No. Well, and we don't need and we don't need the All you need Chris to do is to give us, the town board members, information where we could make a determination as to whether or not those trucks would materially injure the roadway. So can we first notify the logger then that North Ohioville is off limits between 299 and North, North Ohioville. 299 is off limits. We've already determined that's a five ton limit, which they would easily exceed with a low boy tractor 
tons on your over. Yeah, skitter. That would that would easily be eight eight to ten tons right there. The truck alone is over that. Yeah. Yes, and then we could make that would give us a good week to make a determination with you and Dave Clouser from some core samples that Burley Road would be damaged. And then all we need is whatever, then you come up with a number to then bring Burley Road, whatever bond they want to give us, cash bond they want to give us, to then repair and bring Burley Road and Van Ostrand back to original condition. And if I'm correct, as far as DOT law reads, after speaking to an officer, if the sign, you can specifically say body truck, um, that's how you get around the um, car, bus, you know, and this is what they could enforce. You know, the logging trucks, they'll go out logging truck. That might also be the, um, you also have to watch up, you know, I heard the guy delivering firewood to someone down a truck. That's in the commerce, is it not? In the commerce, you can't stop. Like, you can't stop you can't, interstate you know, commerce, you interstate commerce. You mm -hmm. shouldn't mess around. And, and so, no one's driving a no one's driving a firewood truck uh, that I've seen around New Paltz that exceeds five tons. Yeah, it's, that's like that. It's close. It's, 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 it's close, but it's certainly not have, seven. Okay. People have so, trips on my road that are more than five tons. Possible. Oh, so we need information but, that we But he's have that allowed to. A resident is allowed to. That we face the same thing on Shivertown. Oh, okay. That's different. Okay. That's okay. So I just want to understand. So you're saying, Kevin, that. Um, um, it's a little bit easy, but we still have to do the um, core sample and have the justification, right? You need the justification. Okay. And then the town board can choose to act okay. or not act on the information. Uh, okay. So the plan is for the board's going to authorize. Jeff made a motion. He was waiting to ask you, Kevin, if you thought $1,500 was enough. Um, if Joe did have to draft something up or well, what do you I, I think also part of the application, maybe if Kevin looks at this, part of their application indicates the route that they're going to follow and that route already violates our weight limit. Right. So, so maybe you could even, as part of it, you could ask Joe, it's page, well, they're not numbered, but I don't know, four <laughs> pages in, five, six uh -huh. pages in, there's a map and maybe you could authorize Joe to send a letter Okay. and or email tomorrow to the town of Lloyd indicating that there it will be violating weight limit on a road and they need to ask Jane or they need to not start logging operations until this can be remedy I think I, I'm gonna jump in on your no I would love okay, to your resolution and uh, I'm sure my brother and Joe will be unhappy with this friendly <laughs> amendment, but I think we should limit it to two hours of time. Wh whatever, yes, I'm happy with that. Whatever you okay. think it is. But, but, but right now for the moment, what we're basically saying is we would like him to, um, the first action we want him to do is to send a letter to the town of Lloyd saying that they would be violating the, the weight limit Correct. on North Ohioville. Right. So this no. Uh, I, I keep saying well, I, I, I No, no, I'm going to say town of Lloyd. Okay. I'm in a sopas. I apologize. Okay. That was my that was my okay. fault. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to ask our attorney um, to send a letter to the town of Asopas <coughs> talking about North Ohio, Ohio, North Ohio Road and their weight limit and telling them that they cannot travel on these roads. Um, and then simultaneously, am I asking him if he could do an injunction or something? No. Or, I'm just asking him to no. do this. We're just going to start the preparing the signs. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, and then, then Chris will, and then in this authorization, we're authorizing. And Chris to then do the board sample, which you can do without our authorization, but get it to Dave. So we're authorizing Dave to do the analysis and get it to us as soon as possible. And then if we think we need to have a special meeting, we'll have a special meeting. Otherwise, if we can wait till Thursday, we'll do it Thursday. And then should any neighbors who live out in this neighborhood see logging trucks coming in that they, to them would appear to exceed the weight limit, they would call I, I Chris? Chris. Call the state police. I, I, I already spoke to the state police today. Yep. My name is Elijah. Yeah, you okay. will. As soon as they start rolling, they're not even going to come out. They haven't the started yet? No. Okay. Because of the, because the, it's been too late. Right, long. right. But not only will the state police check them to wait, because they have a thing. They're not supposed to be on town roads. 
they were always going after the larger drugs. But besides going after them for the weight, they're going to inspect those drugs. If those drugs aren't up to snuff, they're going to take them okay. off the road, too. Okay, okay so, okay. Okay, so we well, well, we have a motion, but I need a second and uh, a vote. I made a motion. I, I friendly amended it. And I accept your friendly amendment. Okay, so um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. motion so carried. Thank you. Okay. Can we also need the Nostrum? What? The Nostrum 2 or just Burley? I need to know what rows the core. I know we're doing Burley. Are we doing the Nostrum row 2? Let me ask our town engineer while he's sitting here an unfair question. What would your suggestion be? I don't believe Van Nostrum will handle one of the trucks. Do they have to use Van Nostrand to get? Yeah, yeah you yeah. can't get to Burley without Van Nostrand. But, but well, if I, they can't use Burley, well, if we're going to ask for if we're going to ask for a bond to repair, done? do we need to Thank prove you. that Van Nostrand cannot handle it? Just remember too, some, with the way limits, <laughs> some of the law also says that you can't. There has to be roads around it. Um, that was one of the other things for Shivertown. That's the way we were able to put a weight limit on Shivertown. If there was other roads that they could take, force them then. Um, that did have a weight on it, so you might have a problem. I guess go all the way out to 299. Well, eh, that might be an issue. Then we'll talk about it in court or somewhere. But you know, the town of New Paltz can't continue to provide roads for these kinds of operations and repair them afterwards. Well, I'm just like, even an oil truck, if, you have, if you're on North Ohio and you have to go That's service a house on Coast Guard, right? the only way to get from there to there is down to Norston Road. You couldn't, I guess you Well, didn't you say that we could just say logging trucks? Yes, you can. Yeah. So why don't we just stick with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, but we're still waiting for Dave to give us the answer if we should just do Burley or we should do Van Nostrum. They'd have to use the other way out um, to go through the sofa of the game. So I think that's the first thing. So just a burly for the moment. Okay. Okay. Just burly for the moment, but we'll wait to see what happens. And, and I'll call Joe first thing. And okay. Let, yeah, and then you and I will talk. Well, maybe why don't you come, if you actually come over um, in the morning, we can talk afterwards. You're going to be here. We'll figure it out. We can call them together. So this way you can. Get, oh, in the morning. Okay. Okay. I'll be here. I'll be a little late. You enjoy your son's graduation. I can handle it. Where are we graduating tomorrow? High school or middle school? It's just a step up from middle school to high school. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, so moving along, the next thing we have is, um, I guess we could do the municipal water system. Um, and uh, let me pull that out. Thank you. Good book. Thank you. Hopefully I'll explain this correctly, and if not, Dave, please jump in at any given point. Um, and uh, well, thank you, Hector. And I just want to let you all know that uh, um, we put it on letterhead, we scanned it, and Hector sent it out. Thank okay. you. Thank so, you. So, all done. Okay, so um, the Park Point appealed a decision made by our building inspector relative to a municipal water system and relative to the definition of a municipal water system. That's, and um, so they appealed it, they lost because of timeliness. And then um, it was um, requested by the planning board attorney that the town board codify what uh, the building inspector had said about the municipal water system and how we define it. So we have a letter from our building inspector explaining um, how the municipal water system is defined in an RV zone and then how she interpreted it. And then she ended up, so we have that. And then what she gave us was, after George Lithgow, the planning board attorney, um, concurred by the engineer, that we should um, um, yeah, introduce yeah, the documents from the county. Yeah, this is all. Yeah, all introduce, yeah, whole packet. yeah, introducing a local law amending to Chapter 140 zoning law definition, be it enacted by the town board of the town of Moon Pools, Ulster County, New York, as follows. Section 1, Chapter 140 of the Code of the Town of New Pools entitled Zoning is hereby amended as follows. One, by adding definition of municipal water supply system and public water supply system to existing section 140-4.C entitled definitions to read as follows. 
municipal water supply facility or water supply system, a permanently installed water supply system including the facilities, works and water sources used by such system to provide a potable water supply to users for domestic purposes and which is owned by or operated under the control of municipality or a municipal water district duly established pursuant to the New York State law. For purposes of this chapter, if the town board has established a water district encompassing the areas served by an existing or proposed water supply system, the owner of such system has made an irrevocable offer or dedication to the district of the system and all necessary rights to operate it, acceptable in form to the town board as governing body of the district. And the owner of the system has entered into a written agreement with the town setting forth the circumstances in which the district may assume ownership of the water supply system and operate it for water supply purposes and the terms on which ownership of the system will be transferred to the district on acceptance of offer of dedication. Such system shall be deemed to be under the control of the municipal district. Central water supply facility or water supply system, a permanently installed water supply system, including the facilities, works, and water source used by such system, that is owned and operated by a single entity lawfully authorized to provide a supply of potable water to more than one user for residential, commercial, industrial, or other institutional purposes. A central water supply system may be a municipal central water system or a private central water system. Section two. This local law shall take effect immediately upon filing in the office of the Secretary of State. So, I will let Dave explain what that means, and then we can have a discussion. But Dave, if you can do it, I just need you to get the microphone. So, uh, or if you want to come sit here in Jean's chair, either or. We should this way. Sure. Check that this is on. This would only apply to the RV zoning district, and I, I think I can give you a little history of why it needs to be updated. The first RV zoning district was Meadowbrook, and I believe this was written to make sure that uh, the water supply from the water districts was actually looped. There was a, a water main that came through the plaza that was connected and ran down Henry Du Bois to loop the system. Um, since that time, the village is no longer allowing extensions of water districts. They're requiring annexation. So it makes uh, running a municipal system impossible to a, a new project. So this is trying to look at being able to do a, a system that's a private system as long as there is a, a takeover agreement on that. Uh, private system. Whenever the town wants to be able to take it over, they have that opportunity. Now, by doing this, it doesn't bind us to actually create a water system for anybody. It's just a matter of setting the ground rules for if one should be entered into this process and a procedure. It will always be up to the town to take it or not. And that would probably happen if there was a development that came in that uh, you could expand and get more users and it was a development that the town wanted. There's another RV project that's coming before the board that's a senior housing project uh, down on... Sataeva. Nope. It's... Uh, By the, the diner? On Route 32 South. Oh, right, right, right. right. By uh, where South Putt comes in. It's on the west side of the road there. That's an RV district, and they came in and did a, a paid conceptual review on that, and they're planning on putting their own well system in and being able to offer that to the town if that would ever be a supplement to another town water district. So there's a couple RV districts that are in the same spot here. Now, what is it, uh, every so often you read of uh, mobile home parks and stuff that have R that are set up as RV districts? How come the towns don't take those over right away? Because then what ends up happening is they go bankrupt, whatever, and then the homeowners are kind of stuck. So is the best thing to do is let them develop it and then you take it over sooner than later? Um, the best thing to do is to make sure that whoever is building that private water system that you know what they're using to build it with. So it's, I'm going to say, public water system quality instead of cheap equipment. Now, I'll just use the example. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? There's been several 
mobile home parks that have transportation altered. corporations if there's more than one entity involved there's a formal process that to have a public water system with multiple users and not just one owner you have to set up what's called the transportation corporation that has to be approved by the town board rate structures also rate structures Subject also to yep regulation and then engineering so that you're we would have an engineer on site to also ensure that it's you being established make sure well, that what's, it's what's our goal here what's what's our goal what are we trying to do looking at future rv districts and making sure that right now we have something that doesn't work in the code it needs to be updated okay so what do we have now what we have right now is they have to have a municipal water system the town doesn't have any municipal water system they have water districts that's fed by the village but we can't extend mains from the village because the village has enacted the law that says you have to annex to be able to so because get the village water. town doesn't have the municipal water system we're expanding the definition to include private water systems as long as we can take them over right so that's the whole purpose of yep. well it's, it's a little bit yes in a sense but it's a little bit more in a sense that um, within this, we're also going to create, saying that they have to enter into a contract with us, so before they end up um, even going to create the system, that now we have guidelines of how that system gets created, where we put in things like Dave said, that it has to meet certain standards, and before they can even enter into even thinking about creating a system, that the town is very clear what we're going to expect from them to do this system before they even start. So it's a real clarity for a developer to know the expectation of a town, of the town, before they even move forward. And then simultaneously, if we're going to, we want development and we're approving this development, and in order to do it, we have to have this quote municipal water system with this contract that if we end up taking it over, we're taking over something that we know has been built to a standard that we're willing to accept. Can, sure. can I just? Um, so are we modifying our whole RV zoning? Is, is that what's going to end up happening here? No. no. Just, because I would like to do that. If this is my opportunity. <laughs> um, what would you like to do? Well, I. You know, it's sort of be careful what you wish for because RV sounded wonderful and it, it, the uh, Bellaterra apartments were a terrific project in every way. But now that I'm looking at the way it's being used, I'm sorry that we didn't somehow create a district where there could also be some mixed use and commercial. And that's, so all we're gonna be seeing under RV, because it's residential variable, is residential. And um, I would like to see it, it, I would like to see the opportunity for some small retail or other commercial. Um, I would like to see residential variable mean perhaps what they're talking, what the village is talking about doing here on 32 with, you know, some light, retail or commercial on the first floor and then apartments and stuff on the second floor. So is this an opportunity to just take that whole piece of zoning back and fix all of this? This really doesn't do anything with the RV district. It only does something to the definition of a municipal water system. I guess what I'm concerned about is that it will only encourage more residential development and not give us what I'm looking for, which is some more commercial tax base to offset the cost of residential development. Planned unit development does everything that you right. are wanting, but there's also a size limitation or a size minimum for that. There's other right. pieces to that one. The, the good thing about the PUD is they really have to demonstrate that community benefit. Right. So You're I don't talking know. About a residential pod or a mixed? Pod? It's mixed. So it's commercial but, but, and residential. Right. Pod. But if um. But that doesn't preclude us from. I, I understand the issues are separate, relatively speaking. But that doesn't preclude us from looking at that and and making those changes if we wanted to. If we didn't want it to just be a PUD where they had to come and apply for it, because with the PUD you have to apply. Right. Right. For, for the right for that. And um, so, if, you know, what Kitty's saying is she'd like to change the zoning that's in place right now, so it really encourages, you know, a PUD could sort of maybe, uh, you know, a, um, 
especially in New Paltz, um, that uh, a developer might not want to come in and have to have that extra step of having to do a PUD and go through special use and all that stuff. And so, therefore, if you had it within your zoning, it encourages well, we that do. kind of development. I mean, Park Point originally came to us as a PUD, right. and then the whole water situation kind of... Well, even well, more. Is that like why changed three, it Well, to three a, years ago, yeah. when I was meeting with Park Point, what happened is they were going to apply for a modified PUD, and it really doesn't work that easily because you really have to show cause why you're mod and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but why you're modifying it. And they didn't have a lot of show cause to say why they couldn't include retail. So our PUD is really set up as a PUD to what Kitty is speaking about, is you're going to build the community, which includes housing, maybe some manufacturing offices, and retail you have to show a cause on why you can't include those components and this property is large enough to include those components and the traffic is available. So I think Dave's part of where he's looking and I think what Kitty's saying too and I think this is a better way to do it is we modify the zoning mm -hmm. and then you, you change RV yeah, I well, mean, that's what, what I'm afraid of is we, if we just do this and piece of the water, of the municipal water supply, then all the projects we're going to see are going to be residential requests for municipal water. And, um, but if we don't do that now and we do take this opportunity to get ourselves back into the mixed use world, New RV districts have to be established by the town board, too. There's no more. Right, because we stopped. left that I know of after. We stopped the at Bella Terra, didn't we? Or do we keep going that list? That's the end of Bella Terra yeah. is the very end of it. What, so what we would have to continue use? out to uh, Jansen Road, then? If that, would, that property would have to be established as an RV district. It right now, right that's, now. what is that established as now? I think it's R1 right now. Is this where the senior housing is planned? Right. Is so past you, the RV. Right. The current okay. RV. So we would have to extend that through all the orchards all the way out to probably Jansen. You can, I mean, the RV district is something that you can just pick an area. It doesn't have to be contiguous with other RVs. It might make sense or it might not. Why don't we have all to sit down to talk about this with the planning board? Well, this is being recommended to well, this well, well, there's again, there, there's, again, there's a twofold, there's two levels of conversation for the moment, and I and I think Councilman Logan just argued for why we should change the zoning because the Park Point project might have been a better project and there might have been more readables if they could do the with the PUD, but because yeah. of our zoning, no, and no, 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 they no. didn't they, want to put in any commercial. They didn't want. They chose not to put in commercial. <laughs> oh, yeah. So when okay. they went to go modify it, we oh, were actually in favor of commercial. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't mind commercial going in there. No, no, I understand. Yeah, I yeah, thought it was, was the other way around. I thought they wanted to do it, but they couldn't. No, because no, we would have. We no. were in oh. favor of it actually. Oh. We're being asked. We wanted a bowling alley. No, no, we're not being asked to change. We're not changing anything. It's just we're expanding the definition. Which no, we're change. clarifying the definition. The definition. Well, it's a clarification that gives somebody a green light. Well, not yes, yes. and no. I mean, in a sense, what happened Otherwise, was we wouldn't change anything. Well, this is well, what happens if we don't do anything right now. It's impossible for them to meet the code, and they can go to court and say you've got a code that can't be met. So. Ooh. Impossible for who to meet the code. It's impossible for Park Point or the RV district to be so, able to get municipal. And that's water because they need to have Department of Health water right and sewer. Right. I know. How many particular projects right now, whether depending on what stage you're in, really need this to be done? Two. Two. But I, the reason why we were asked to do this was because of the. Um, um, because of the challenge to the ZBA, and then the um, what's the word? Um, the opinion of our building inspector. So our building inspector gave a opinion of what she believes the defi definition of a municipal water system is, and so the ZBA that was challenged. The ZBA with upheld her opinion. Well, actually, it was timeliness, but. You know, because of timeliness, her opinion stood. So what George Lithgow was recommending, and this is from the planning board chair, a um, lawyer, that we should codify it because now we have a clear definition, which then at a certain point, whether it's Park Point or another project, they know what it is. They still have to come back and negotiate and talk, and there still has to be contractual, but it takes away 
um, the ability for an Article 78 to be leveled, levied on the town, which okay. would cost us here, a lot of money. Here's, here's what I Because there's understand. no explanation. Here, here. I thought that projects were supposed to be consistent with zoning, not that you changed your zoning to fit a project. Well, they can't meet the zoning. It's impossible to meet the zoning if it's a municipal system that has to be. But why does it have to? It, does, it only has to be a municipal system because they want to put in 700 That's units. Right. No, 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 no. Right? They're they, saying that oh, the RV zone is, says it has to be. This is the key favorite. But, That's but the one that's you could put most. in 40 single family homes with that. wells yeah. and have a development there. Yeah. That wouldn't be in the RV district. But it, it's permitted, it just... No, because you have to have that municipal system in an RV district. Since we don't have a municipal system, there's no way anybody could ever be. Right? So how did Belaterra happen? You guys... Well, you made an RV district up there. Yeah. How did the it health, happen? The health department at that time was not looking at it this way. As my understanding uh, is, it should have never... My understanding, without being an expert, and I wasn't here, but... Um, it should not have been happened. It should not. Correct me if I'm wrong. It should not have been allowed to go down the way it went down, but it did. And so now, some people say it's precedent. It's not precedent. I mean, just because there's a mistake so doesn't make precedent. Their, but what is their system? <laughs> it's a public water supply, but it's not a municipal system. Now, if there, yeah, if really the people that own, Bel <laughs> if the people that own Bellaterra abandon the property, uh, residents would still be there, but abandon the property, would we then become the default owners of that water and sewer there? There is no agreement with that deal, is there? Right. No. So then what are the, what do the owners do then? See, that, that's what my fear is too, because you see this happen too frequently. They would show up out there and say, you got to do something. I, and that's the and, and this, this has been happening in, mostly in mobile home parks, so I guess my concern is what what can we do now? Why don't we just build a, a municipal system? We're trying to. <laughs> well, we're actually working on that, and hopefully we'll have an update. But maybe what, what by can next we do to modify this to keep our <laughs> point going forward so they are within our laws? The RV district requires that municipal system, so that modification of the definition would work for both of the RV. We're modifying projects. the definition right. so that there is an avenue for them to pursue, which they need to have an avenue to pursue, right? I would, I would it rather... It says public... And will this protect Bellaterra residents, too? It says municipal yes. water supply. We, don't, that's we don't have one. But it's also important, but, but, but we can also protect Bellaterra residents right now, because in, in all seriousness, say, I, I don't even know who the owners are, but if the Bellaterra owners decide to walk away from that apartment complex, we're going to have residents with a unmanned water and sewer system. So, and, and they literally are going to show up out front here and say, let do something. But I just okay. want to rephrase. Wait, wait. I, I just want to go back a little bit of history. So um, Bellaterra was sold by the same people who sold the Park Point project, right? That was all one family's parcel. So um, under RV zoning, was the town required to um, make that whole area RV? Could we have skipped the intermediary 50 acres and just made um, the Bellaterra section RV? Or did... The Bellaterra section was the end of the RV that was already created. I'm, I'm not even sure when that RV district there was created. But it's, it's been Shortly years before Bellaterra. <laughs> Did it, oh, it, no, it, it was it pre existed before that. It pre existed you, probably, Kitty. Yeah, it was. I back. thought I was on the board when we did that. But you were on the board when Bellaterra was developed, but I think the RV district out there was established because they had abandoned I, those orchards. We did an adaptive reuse for the oh. Bellaterra, which was they took the old cooler building right. and converted it to apartments, and so there was a smaller. Uh, because it was loud, because there was an RV district. Right. Right. So that, that pre existed okay. you then, Kate. Does it make you I feel thought, better? No, I thought I thought <laughs> we I mean we were very proud of ourselves, I thought, for creating the REV district, but maybe it was just the adaptive reuse. That it was did. that was a good deal. Okay. Saving that cool yeah. building. But but yeah. the, but Kevin, I'd i I'd like to rephrase the way you phrased we're not doing this in order to um, 
make it easier for Park Point to comply, I think we're being asked to do this to protect the town because the way it's being written right now, it's sort of you have zoning that allows this project, but then you have this direct conflict of you saying have you have that requirement that can't be met. right exactly. Right. So because there's a requirement that can't be met within a zoning that's been established by the town, you're making it impossible for a developer to do it, thereby allowing an Article 78 to be brought to the town, which could be very costly to the town to defend. Money. Right, exactly. So that's why the attorney for the planning board is saying that because of what happened with the ZBA, because of the fact that the ZBA upheld the building inspectors opinion that the next step was for the town board to codify what she did, which puts us all on better legal ground, and then as the projects that need this proceed, at least there's clarity, and then you have to get to the next level of them if you proceed, what the contract are, looks are like, we, if you want to do the district, are we so. and trying to do something this, this evening? Well, so that's what we're being asked Does this to do. go to George Lithgow or does this go to Joe Moriello? No, what happened was George, if um, I remember correctly, George, George told us to have Joe look at it, right? Yep. So what happened was Stacy had asked us to do this, and I think we talked about it at the last meeting, um, was Stacy had asked us this. George was the one who recommended it, but then he said it should be Joe Moriello who's drafting it because Joe deals with the town stuff, not the planning board stuff, and this goes with the purview of the town. And so... But Joe can't write the... No, Stacy actually, I think, wrote it. But does I think Joe have a conflict of interest yeah. on this whole... I, I, don't, I don't, don't think Joe, think can Joe wants this. to be oh, anywhere near Joe this. Didn't. I don't think Joe wants I think, to be I think Stacy, you're right. Actually, you're right. Stacy wrote it. I don't think it. Joe wants to be near... He's already okay. maybe yeah. recused yeah. himself from okay. basically... Maybe then maybe it was Stacy. Maybe George did. I'm confusing a different... Um, when George told us the town map, he sent the town map to Joe. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, yeah, okay no. so I'm getting confused. Okay, you're, so you're, no, you're not losing your mind. We, okay. we, George, George referred us to refer to Joe for a town map <laughs> right. last meeting. Right. Right. Okay, so, so I, I think so, so this must be a George. So, 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 so George, that's right. It's actually, you're absolutely right because I had to call George to um, get this faxed over because Stacy was, um, uh, well, Stacy was away and I couldn't find it and so I called George but then we found it. Okay. We found it. So, so it was George book question. out. So because it was drafted already. Last week we, um, or last month, we talked about a situation out on Rose Lane where five or six homeowners have a problem and we're now going to amend a town law to solve their problem. But there was another way to solve the problem, which is an open development area, which I'm disappointed that we're not going to do. So my question here is, is there any other way to solve this problem other than to change the language about it? I well, it's not changing the language, it's defining the language. Well, actually, the best way is to develop a town water system. Which is what we're working on. <laughs> okay. Is, oh, we're working on it, we might have gotten closer. Uh, uh, the problem is, is there's, it, the law clearly states, I don't miss the right one, I just gave it to Kevin, it, is this. The, the, the law right. clearly states, uh, in other words, we have a law that says that you can't do it. We have a lot of conflicts and it's with very our simple. zoning. I mean, it's actually a sentence that you and I can understand. It's, right. It clearly states we're, we're making a demand that we can't fulfill. Right. By, by Which, as a community grows, these are the issues that you run into as a community. As a rural community changes over to a, de a more dense community, these are the issues you're going to run into. And it was good intentions when Meadowbrook was built. That yeah. made sure that it was a municipal system that ran through mm -hmm. it and not just the service connection. So again, we're not doing anything that puts us in a position where we have to create a district, we have to agree to creating a district. It just creates a road map. It takes away the contradiction in the law okay. and the zoning. I, just, I do remember John Sansalone saying, never take over a private water system. But there are always huge problems that the town ends up having to solve. Old ones. For sure. So how well, how much control are we going to have over the way this is? Well, built? that's what's going to be. That's why in the language it actually clarifies that there has to be a contract that clearly defines how it gets built, what specifications, all sorts of stuff. And if they can't meet the criteria of what we want for in a, a private water district, we won't enter into a contract because for us to be willing to accept the water system that could be problematic for us. So in a sense. This actually really 
really protects the town because we're setting the terms of how anybody moves forward with doing this. And, and Kitty is right. I mean, Dave could speak to this. But I think there's been several mobile home parks, and there's a couple in Orange County that had legacy there's systems, some. and it, it's literally cost towns, mm -hmm. small towns, millions of dollars. I was the engineer for East Fish Co. We had that, yeah. six private water systems come in within a year that mm -hmm. they were just failing, and the contractor had either died or left. And it was all right. So on, on legacy systems, there's an issue. Now, this one, if you read it, Kitty, does ensure that our engineer will be there, their engineer will be there, Department of Health will be there. But yes, I do agree with you. It doesn't necessarily mean we want to be in the water and sewer well, business. Well, actually, actually, in some ways, correct me if I'm wrong, their engineer, nobody else's engineer has to be there. It's our engineer who has to determine on behalf of the town what you think the criteria is to develop a system that you believe is correct, and their engineer either says, yep, or screw it. It's not really negotiable as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> right? This, this, this proposed law says we have to establish a water disc first. Yes? It says establish a water district encompassing the areas served by an existing water supply system. We don't have that. Except in, at the one place that uh, you mentioned, uh, the little Bell 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 Bell
you know, we might be able to make this a reality, so let's see what happens, and I'll get some updates before we even have to codify this in a sense, but I don't think that'll make a difference, but we're working on the municipal system we'll full-fledged. Whatever we, you have planned, we'll just uh -huh. plug this into it. If we know right. some things, right. absolutely. Okay, so is that okay with everybody that we'll have yeah. um, um, yep. our unofficial attorney talk to the official attorney and the engineer to oh, basically to make sure that they feel comfortable and stuff, and then yeah. Kevin will bring this back to us next Thursday with okay. his understanding. Okay. 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 okay great. Everybody. Okay. So next is you read this, Dave. No. Okay. Um, next that we have Dave here is. Um, uh, the grant for Suez 6, so um, I'll do a little quick background and then I'll turn it back over to Dave. Uh, I had met with a, and Dave, I had met with a engineer, a grants writer who had called that had been referred to us. Um, well, actually, I'll take a little quick step back. When I, after I got elected, a little step back. How far back? Did I go back 20 years ago? No, 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 we're going back to, we're going back right after I got elected. Okay. And, um, um, Current term. because this term, because um, Jim Littlefoot had always talked about a grants writer, grants writer, grants writer. So I called Dave and I asked him who he thought was the best grants writer in the county. He had recommended somebody. I called this person. We had a two-hour conversation. I wasn't even on the book shit. I hadn't even been inaugurated. But I spent two hours with him around Christmas time talking about whatever. Um, we got busy, whatever kind of stuff. We never hired a grants writer. But a unique opportunity happened where the federal government came up with $25 billion, Dave? It was a lot. It was a lot of money, like $25 billion of money that um, they're giving to um, local governments and municipalities to do wastewater systems, to protect from storms and all this kind of stuff, and be a little bit more proactive to fix things versus fixing them after the fact. And they basically want the money spent within two years, so it's like use it or lose it. So there's an extraordinary amount of money. And originally, Westchester was in um, the, with the Hudson Valley, but now Westchester is in with New York City, so that means there's even more money for us to have, and it's like a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So um, this particular grants writer got back in touch with me to say, you've got a unique opportunity, but you've got a limited amount of time. So um, Dave and I had a conversation with him on the phone to understand what was going on. He thought Suez 6 could absolutely um, um, be a part of this. Part of it, you have to, it's through Chris Gibson's office, then working with the governor's office um, and the county's office. So I have a pretty good relationship with um, Congressman um, Gibson. He really would like to help Blue Pools. And um, so we talked about this. Dave and I talked about it. He was willing to draft this up. Um, um, you know, without any cost, draft up like a letter to get to um, Chris Gibson and get up to the county, I guess. Um, and so we all, he was willing to do that. We thought we had to do a turnaround the next day, but it ends up, I think it got extended. Um, the thing got extended. So I don't think we've gotten a letter yet from him, right? To uh, I think it's the 1st of July. It got extended down to the 1st of July. Okay, but we saw them got the letter from him that he was going to send to. So. So well, right now we thought it was going to have to be like a real quick turnaround kind of thing, but so we asked him since he was willing to do it. So he's doing a letter um, and to get it in. Then um, he had given us a contract for um, 18 months, but he hasn't come. He hasn't met you guys. We don't want to do a contract for 18 months, you know, whatever. So Dave was supposed to speak with him after he got done pulling a lot of things together to try to negotiate. You know how we could enter into you know into something with him to do this, and then we could look at a long-term relationship after the fact, and so that's why we put it on the agenda for tonight. We thought we'd have the letter, and we thought we might have to do some more authorization, but we have a little bit of time. So he was willing to come tonight for everybody to meet, but I didn't want him to be here while we talked about it. My attitude was sort of let's talk about it, make sure everybody's interested. We could either just one, and then Dave will talk to him about something, then we could either ask him to come, or Dave can just get us back um, what he's looking for, you know, what Dave, we can negotiate in terms of enumeration. You do get reimbursed through the grant for the grants writer, but if you don't get the grant, it's an out-of-pocket expense. So hopefully maybe by next week we could come back with a proposal of what it would cost if we take it to the next step in addition to the letter. And if you want him to be here, he can be here, but Dave won't be here, so it's up to the board. But to lose this opportunity, and Dave also said there were two other projects that you said were shovel-ready that you thought we should put in. I, he asked for, uh, put his letter together, a summary of the Sewer 6 project and, and the, the dollars, and I was, he said uh, show it high for the grant, 1.45 million. And, and I'm sorry, Dave, because Sewer 6 just literally gets me <laughs> sad and angry all at the same time every time we talk about it. But that 1.6, that's for 
fixing what's currently there, or is the 1.6 from connect connecting it to the village system? That's replacing the whole the whole process. So are we going to just say let's not even try to connect, or try to cross? Use well, well, right. There is a pipe through under the throughway. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's there accessible. Is. You have to have the village annex uh, that will take the flow. The one thing we haven't got that worked out. That's why we need to have some kind of. This, so, so this east, right here would uh, solve this problem and make the system larger. So then, potentially east of the throughway, we would have more our own sewer. A little more capacity, not a lot. Too well, a little. There. Maybe moving it. it does one point six give us the ability to move the sewer plant, or that's a totally that's a much larger project? Then you start buying land. Well, we own that land out there, though. We we. Oh, where? We were given that strip of land. Uh, we own like six or eight acres out there. Between uh, the old Mangelli property, I think. Yeah, it's 37 acres that's on there. That's about there's about 36 acres that's underwater. Oh. Which, oh, that's, which we're looking at is potential well, that's, water that's water system. That's our water system. So, that's right. our water system, right? So, exactly. Are you trying to say building a sewer plant in a swamp is a bad idea? It's probably <laughs> bad. Just yeah. okay. Well, the thing, that, just, that, that, I did not realize all that property was just, that just, wet. Just so. go back to Jeff. Um, when Dave and I, after Dave did all that work to come up with a new plan for sewer six, and we had the neighbors here, so then the next step was Dave and I went to meet with the DEC to talk about it and make you know so we can move forward. And at that time, the DEC did say that they wanted us to. Um, um, try to get into the village system, and we said it's really not possible because of the annexation, um, and um, because of the annexation thing. But they still really want to do it. And they even said that um, um, that they would lift the consent order if the village would work with us. And um, then I had a conversation with the mayor, and I thought that there was a possibility of us doing this, but he pretty much dug his heels in and said it's got to be annexation. And it was like, well. If you want to annex all the way out to sewer six, then why don't we just consolidate and let's be done with it? Because that's what we're doing anyway, in a sense. And if stuff. Want, so you know, I, 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 if they want sewer six, I'm more than happy. Yeah, to annex. but right. you have to. But you have to give them everything. They can have it right now. But Jeff, you have to give them everything from Ulster Savings Bank all the way up to sewer what, six. The police department. <laughs> take it. Take it. It's, it's you know what? Take it. Yeah, take it. It's yours. Don't. But I think the village Unfortunately, has to agree to under be under annexation laws, though, we are stuck with the debt, though. So that would be the downside. There's still debt on that. So we're so looking for a proposal. We have to keep the debt. Why don't we just get a proposal for next? Well, right now, so right now, just so also, so you just understand that it's it is a lot of money, and then it's also a zero percent. Part of it's a zero percent loan, and part of it's um, so a 30, ton of thirty percent grant and a seventy percent zero interest loan. It's a good start. How many years? I think, it's, I think it's 25 years. What's the yeah. useful yeah. length of system? 50. Okay. And, and you can expand it. This is a system so, that you can grow. So you can add more pods to it. And it's not a lot because of its few charge. But, yeah. but, but, but let me just, if, if we were able to do this and fix sewer 6 finally and take care of at least, although well, sewer 6 is doing much better now, right, Chris? I was out there all night the other day. Okay, I guess I guess I I'll take that back. It, was, it, was, it did save a lot of money though. We saved thirteen thousand dollars um, by not having all our sand to the transfer station. Good. We worked on a deal with the DEC to let us bring it to the uh, our so, land fill and use it for backfill. Okay. So um so anyway, just so I end Okay. So 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 anyway, this would help us finally fix sewer six. But by doing this Dave two in a way because we are looking at potential, there is land out on South Putt where there's a potential to do discharge. And if we do this, we could ultimately hook this in to a bigger system, right? And make like, it, it doesn't have to be self-contained in of itself. I mean, once we do that, we can. This would solve the problem for sewer six, if you got enough money to not make it the debt on the sewer six folks. Mm -hmm. This could stand alone. If it is possible and can be done quickly to take it someplace else and treat it, that's a possibility. Well, I mean, in other words, DC has oh, wait, been do, do, very do we? kind at not telling the town it's time. You know, they, they really have been patient on that. Something has to do be we? done. We'll just keep yeah. Do we have an estimate of what the cost is going to be what, to cost? repair? One point six to replace. To, to repair. To prepare the grant. Well, that's well, that's that's so what, what we need. Well, right now, what well, right now the letter he's offered to do the letter gratis and get it into Chris Gibson because of the time and everything. 
but then in terms of actually doing the grant and the follow up, that's what we, he, you know. When I asked him on the phone uh, about that, he said, "Well, I gave you a contract proposal for 18 months." I didn't want to get into him with him right then. Afterwards, Dave and I talked about the fact that that's not really acceptable in a sense that I don't think this town wants to enter into a grant, this board. We might if we meet him, well, but- Susan, I, I have to remind you that we did give Carol a $5,000 stipend oh, no, in last can't. year's budget to write grants. Oh, no, no, we, they, we gave her the stipend to help like she did, she helped it was really. For grant no, writing. no, I know, but she no to facilitate grant writing. She's not a grant writer, but she facilitated getting these the, um, um, safe safe routes to schools grant, and she helped facilitate it. We got can we, that. Can we, can we she just, couldn't write this though. This is just, really. Can we just get a proposal from this guy for the next meeting? Well, that's what we're hoping to. Absolutely, that's absolutely. Yep. That's what we're hoping to. Yeah. Now the question is, do you want him to come or not? No, we don't need him to come. Good. Yet. Okay. Do you what think so? No, okay. no, I, just, I need a yeah. letter. Yeah. And what about the um, CFA workshops, these Mid-Hudson Regional Economic Development Council workshops for economic development funding up to $760 million? Um, can we ask Carol to attend that? I mean, see. We could both go, sure. That's just going to be college Thursday, go. July 11th. Yeah. You'll go? Yeah, go is, are, is everybody, I have another meeting that night, but is everybody, Getting these things from uh, everybody's getting them. Yeah. I don't have to worry. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. so some of them we could like. There was one that had to do with um, poor communities that wasn't relative to us, right. and the Distressed other one might be. Cities. So, yeah. we may soon be a distressed right. city. Right, right, right. Yeah. exactly. Right. Okay. We're actually, okay. Do we have anything else with Dave? Because we yeah, we do. Up late. We do, um, and we can wrap up pretty. There's not much long left that we have to do. Um, we have to talk with Dave about the uh, Field of Dreams Pavilion, the protest. And Kitty wanted to do the, tap map, the town map edition. So let's do the Field of Dreams really quickly. Or why don't you do the town map while I pull everything out? I just uh, want to make my case again. Not, not to. Actually, it was both of us that wanted to do it too. Yeah. Okay. And I apologize. I did not bring it because I have been speaking to Lori. Stacy was out this week. So I, there were no, unless Kevin, you got them, there were no letters written to the town from any, the two residents that spoke up. So there were, Lori sent me a email and she had about the, this is for the additional property on okay. Rose Lane. Lori and yes, Lori, okay. so, cause she's the one. So she did receive two phone calls and she has spoken with them. So there were a couple things that were discussed that weren't actually accurate. One of them is there are properties out there that can be subdivided. There are a couple of them that if we change this law, actually are properties that will be allowed to be subdivided under current law. So, I don't know, Kevin, you thought there were none, but there actually are some. I don't know if I said there were none, but... No, you said they couldn't be subdivided, and so, but anyway, they, there are properties out there that they can... Have the, they have the frontage, and they have everything... In they the have areas. everything that would allow them that, that area. Got yeah. subdivided on a private road. She said there's properties out there that would be allowed under the current zoning if you change it to it. Once that rough map that Lori said they would be allowed to be subdivided. So why unless we, she's incorrect. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Subdivision code doesn't allow subdivisions off of the private road. Why don't we do this? Why don't we, you and I, sit down with Stacy and, and, and look at this again? Right. Thank I'll you. I'd like to, yeah, Thank I'd you. like to really look at this again because I, I think we're going to get ourselves into a spot so that it's going to be we'll tough. Get clarity on it. Good. So yeah. we'll all agree. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Great. What's Good. next? Okay. Perfect. What's Thank next? you. Okay. So then what's next is the pavilion um, that um, we had gone out to bid. You had the prevailing wage problem. Um, the Bruderhof has agreed to um, basically build it for us. Thank you. And um, if not, Chris could do it and his people could do it. But um, so the operate, the person who did the bid and won the bid, this is the third year in a row that he's willing to keep the cost at um, what the bid was at. Is that related to Ray Lenati? Is that right? No, 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 oh, no. Yeah, no, it's Ray was supposed to do uh, the um, putting, it together. putting it together. Oh, okay. He was only putting it together. It was Unidale Laminated Products, which everybody buys from, which is why they won the bid, because everybody's bids higher, because they all buy it from them. So um, the price of the pavilion was um, 21,090 plus sales tax, um, which was one that won the bid, and they're willing to hold that price. So um, if we, we could, you know, again say that you know authorized buying the pavilion, the Bruderhof will put it up, but Chris could do it with his people if they don't. But the Bruderhof already said there is the need for a. Um, 
a base, a um, slab. A slab. Um, we have uh, Michael Beck and the Baseball Association had offered a while ago to pay for that. So I got a letter from them to confirm that they're still willing to do it. So uh, Michael Beck dropped off a letter today. I'm writing this letter to confirm the commitment of the New Paltz Adult Recreation Association to fund the slab for a pavilion at the New Paltz Sports and Recreation Park. My understanding is that the town is considering options for the concrete work for a pavilion that would range in cost from 6000 to 10000 We have the funds and we will make them available for this project. I would like to remind the town that the Adult Recreation Association has contributed over 60000 towards the park and also thank you for continuing to improve this valuable asset to our community. So they're, so they're committing the six to $10,000 for the slab. The only reason why there's not an exact number is because we're still working out the details of exactly some of the work. So they will do the slab. Um, we would have to reauthorize accepting this bid. Um, the one thing that I would like to point out, um, Chris, um, Chuck did some research and stuff um, just in terms of pavilions and how they bring in revenue. And um, Gardner has um, a pavilion where they charge, well, first let me tell you, it's booked every weekend from May through mid-October, every Saturday and Sunday, that they have to book months in advance because they use this for parties and everybody's using it to do birthday parties out there. Um, and then, um, um, I think it was, what did he say? Oh, Platykill. Platykill also has a pavilion. They also, the same exact thing, it's booked every weekend from May through mid-October, every Saturday and Sunday, four-hour venues. Um, in Gardner, they charge under 25 participants, $75, in up to um, $200, $250. Bucks. Same thing with uh, Platykill, so it ends up becoming an awful lot of revenue. Well, actually, no, let's just... Kitty has heard this from me multiple I know, times. I know. If you build it, you have to maintain it. If we're going to build this, that's fine. Well, maybe it's not fine. But if we're going to build it, do not look at this as revenue. If you look at Gardner's budget, and I have spoken to Gardner, it brings in at most $1,000, $1,500 a year. You're going to do more than that in maintenance. So it, this is not a revenue opportunity by any... You, you're going. This is going to be something you're building for the community. This is an example, again, of we're doing something for the people they can't do for themselves. The question I'm having, though, still is, do we want to build a pavilion that far out of the core of our community? Should we be looking to do, if we're looking, and, and, and again, I do agree, this is money that we are going to take out of the recreation funds. So I, I don't want to say it's free money, but it's money developers have given us and entrusted to us to then go and create recreational opportunities. It is closer to Gardner than it is to the core of our community, fortunately or unfortunately. So we do need to look at fees on it from whether you're a resident or non-resident. But let's not look at this as a revenue opportunity. It's, it's an opportunity. Let, let's all just make sure everyone agrees we're developing something in an area that we all want to continue to develop. Same with the running path, same with the dog path. Uh, my general feeling, though, has been these should be developed within the core of our community, which is like right next to us, we have an empty lot where this same $28,000 could develop an awful nice playground or, or start to develop well, an awfully nice playground that could be open year round. Can I chime in? Please. I, I agree with Jeff. I mean, you know, in the sense that we can't justify this from a revenue. Well, I wasn't. Well, I know you're not. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're not. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't saying okay. anywhere, but, but yeah. But okay. I, I will say that I, I was at two communities this weekend Hamptonburg which is out in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful pavilion with those plastic wrap-ups that you see at the Gilded Honor that come down at the weather's bed and nice bathrooms. That's Jimmy the next thing. Johnny on the spots, which I, I don't know about you, but I have a real problem when I go into a Johnny on the spot and you can't wash your hands. What do you do? When they run out of that, that soap that you're supposed to dispense. There's also six it's four, absolutely too. That disgusting. Yeah. So bottom line is I think it's time we get this done I think we should form some kind of a rec committee, get the rec committee to get people to come in and help us maintain, cut the cost of doing all that. I know that the town had a rec committee at one time. Let's get the rec committee back. Let's get these people involved and have them take care of our field somehow. I have no problem with that at all. And, I, and as a matter of fact, Jeff, I've been wanting to do the pavilion for a long time, regardless of this. This was just given to me, so this has been on the agenda for a long time. Yeah. And I just got to say, you know, 
you know, I, I, you know, we do want to develop the core, but at the same token, the reason the Field of Dreams was entered into is because there wasn't any land in the core to build more baseball fields, soccer fields, and everything we needed, which is why we did the Field of Dreams. The money's already been invested, an awful lot of money. Um, what I was told was we're the only town in the whole entire Hudson Valley that's got, I think, three fields together, which makes us even more unique. So once we get the pavilion up, and I'm going to get into the, um, to the, um, to the bathrooms next in a second while Dave's here. Once we get the bathrooms up, the concession stand going in the pavilion up, the amount of tournaments that we could be having out there, and I think the soccer field, you guys actually invested money last year to have Dave develop um, plans for soccer fields. So there's two soccer fields out there. I have the plans in my office, actually. Three or four years ago. Three or four years ago? Yeah. Okay, so soccer fields, and it's my understanding that the um, the soccer league is ready to move forward with we, the soccer fields, I think too. That's so. great, but I think we should do what Jeff recommends, too, and that we explore you using some of our inner core core properties. We're like, I see a lot of people playing pickleball across from St. Joe's Church. I mean, young and old. It would be nice to have more of that for people in our community. But unfortunately, that's the village, and that's not for us, but too. I know we can do it, though. <laughs> we can do it and know have bathroom facilities for people and make it really mm -hmm. nice. So what do we need to do to get this thing? Okay. And, and I guess the thing that is is that I, this is top of my head, Susan. You'd have to go back and Ooh. check, and, and it may not be that easy, but I, I think our building office has come a long way in the last couple of years. There was about 80,000. Well, this is what I'm going to tell you. Actually, I oh, have you actually it right here. On. I actually have it right here. This will, oh. be the first, this, you know, this will be the first time I'm actually confident in number in six years. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we actually have to do. Dave, too, have, I can tell. <laughs> we, can actually, we actually have to um, make a motion to move money. Okay, we have 49,000 in the Parkland Fund now. Um, at one I'm point. Sorry, which fund? In the park, you know, the recreation park, recreation land, whatever it's called, the you know, the reserved yep. account, forty-nine thousand. Before um, anybody sitting here, except for possibly Kitty's time, this was during the Don Wyland time. Um, Twelve thousand was taken out reserved for Humpo Kill, um, which was never spent, never used. It was a, uh, I think that was for the the bridge to. They were uh, going to put a, uh, a a nature walk way out there. Or that something. was a little boat launch. That yeah, a little yeah. boat yeah. launch yeah. on the bus right. from Ray Lunatis. Right, which never yeah. ended up yeah. happening. So you have twelve. The poison ivy launch. Yeah. So the $12,000 was reserved, but you never moved it back, so we would need to make a motion to move it back. You had $20,000 that was reserved for Clearwater, but um, somehow they found the money within the rep budget and within the baseball budget to do the fields and whatever. So there's $20,000 that was reserved that we need to move back. So once we move, we, the, two, the, the board tonight makes takes action to move the 20000 back and the 12000 back, well, 49 59 69 80, 70, 81K. Right, 81000 so, so Remember so, I said it was about so, 80000 so, 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 so would you make a motion to move so, that? Do I have a second? Uh, second to no. move. Well, no, no, to move. I don't, want, I don't want to take the clear water money out. No, 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 no I already I checked this. Keep, I want to keep 20000 for No, we're going to be no, moving no. it back out again. No, no, it's just being moved back into the Parkland Fund. It could always be moved we back out. We already did those improvements. We already did the improvements. Can you remember we done. I, I know, but there's more to do out there. But if they do, they'll come back and they'll ask us to move it. You're we'll not going to spend $80,000 tonight, are you? No, we're not. Oh, my okay. goodness. She just asked, no, she's not. asking us for about sixteen right now. No, I'm with you. Okay. No, but we just, didn't remember. Remember, we went, that money was in the rec budget. I, 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 rec budget. Just so you do know, I double checked this because I didn't want to move it when I was told it was for fields. I didn't want to do that, but then I was told that, that, that the fields were already you done, the money was taken out of the rec budget and, and the um, race, right. whatever, so they don't need I mean, that. So well, Laura has gone home. Right. Laura's always and, had and again, though, but just, you know, So we made the motion, uh, to I second, move. to move it back. Okay, so any more discussion on moving it back? Mm -hmm. I check this out, Kitty. It's really fun, and we can always move it back. We, I remember where we got the It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's because we're going to be getting more money in. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, I, I spent most of my day recreating and working, so trust okay. me. I will, I will watch the recreation. Okay. okay. So all in favor? Aye. Okay, motion's okay. Now we now, can now again, now we can And it. now I just need to use my favorite quote, Kitty, which is? <laughs> the gift that keeps on taking. Okay. So so remember, it. each time we spend the dollar here, we are going to be spending money well, I, that is I, going to continue well, I to take. And, and there are multiple, just saying, there are multiple. I mean, Saugerties, for example, has a very large ball, soccer field, well, they lacrosse. Nice they and they, they, they actually do have more than three fields. They have a very large complex, uh, several. Oh, I know that. I know and that. they have things that are spun, that have really cool mm -hmm. signs on, like, built by Kiwanis, built by American League. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not asking ours to build it, but, mm -hmm. you know, they have found. So to Kevin's point, it would be nice to get back 
a recreation commission yeah. that would go out yeah. and then help us find some yeah. of our civic organizations, which in New Paltz we have. We, 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 could definitely we have do that. excellent civic organizations in New Paltz, which I'm sure will help us maintain these. But, but that that is the risk you run into is maintaining. But, but I will I will just say that I did double check about the maintenance because when we were talking about the money and stuff, I wanted to understand the implications. And I've talked with Chris and I've talked with Chuck, and in terms of a pavilion relative to the maintenance, it's really just the garbage, and they go out there um, on Mondays anyway to pick up the garbage. And that, um, let me find my notes because I check uh, uh, maintenance. See, check maintenance. I actually asked a question. This garbage pick, pick, garbage pick up Monday morning is already scheduled. They already go out to the Felder Dreams to do it. And that um, basically, if we start having events out there all the time, what they would do is put an overflow container out there like they have a clear water and do the same exact thing. So, you know, um, if there's too much garbage that's overflow, we might at some point want to get a. Um, Dumpster. A dumpster kind of thing, and it would all get taken care of and whatever. So, the, so the maintenance for um, for the um, for a pavilion is really whatever. What do we have to do? So, what I would need for you to do is to authorize us to, um, to spend twenty one thousand oh nine oh plus sales tax. No to sales tax. No oh, right. Sales. Okay. Twenty one thousand oh nine oh for the to buy the pavilion, and that's all you need to do relative to that. So, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second for discussion. Okay. So now you build a pavilion, you got to buy furniture for it. You got to buy picnic tables. You got to buy. We could probably have that donated. Well, that's and again, those are the discussions. That I, I just want to make sure everyone here is comfortable you and I are with. You get a rec committee together. All uh -huh. yes. people okay. that are okay. New Paltz residents doing it now anyway. I'm sure. My concern is while we're having this discussion, now we've got the pavilion. What are the bathrooms? Going okay. To cost well, right. Us that's before okay. we approve the pavilion. So oh. Dave, the bathroom okay. connecting to the county. So. So no, no, no. So the next, well, okay, so we have a motion on the table and a second. Do you want to put the vote on hold for a second? Yeah, well, discussion. We'll I'd like to hear okay. that we're going to get back. Okay, so this is so, okay, so now a, I'm going to move to the next thing because if you look at the agenda, guys, you'll see that it says on the agenda, well, pavilion slash bathrooms, right? Yeah. And so not only okay, bathrooms, protest. but also, protest. And, so, and also for the concession stand, we need right. to accept it. So, okay, so, so, this is, so this is why the protest, okay, what I'm going to ask you to authorize tonight, too, is Dave, um, um, Dave's office found land out at the Field of Dreams that he believes is land that we could create our own septic system and we don't have to go through and connect to the Board of Health through the county, right. which is very problematic in of itself. And so Dave found the land. He thinks it's pretty good. What we would need to do is authorize Dave to the cost of up to $1,600 to go out and do the perk test. Chris can already come out um, with the pickup truck, with his back home, sorry, the backhoe. He's got to dig the holes, dig the holes, dig the holes. And um, Dave just office has to be there for the day to basically do the perk test so he can have the information he needs for the Board of Health in order to be able to, for us to do the system. We have so, a couple trips, actually. Okay, so, yeah. okay. Okay. So okay. the perk tests are good. All right. What would it cost to build the system? We had that From the perk information, we'll figure out what we have to do, what kind of system it's going to be. We think we know already. Okay, so give me. Because it's only going to be a system used nine months of the year. Chris is. Uh, Volunteered to build it. Okay, so it's not going to be much. No, because there's a lot of everything uh, we can do. We can do it in house. You want us to put tank. your name well, up there, like in like the day, like so over the Clouser Memorial Pavilion, over the, 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 the toilet. Mark's Wait. Clouser so, so, so Memorial just, just, Septic System. Okay, so just so just yeah. so just so, just, <laughs> so, just so you also understand. But just so you understand, from what I understand, and I haven't I haven't gotten out there, but I was trying to make arrangements to get out there with the with with Kevin and stuff to see it. But from what I I mean, the building. There, everything's already set up. It's really just a matter of getting. So all the money's been invested. The building's there. What do we have to do. We just have to um, get the sewer well, and get the thing in and buy the toilets. And well, actually, Dave, though, not to pound salt into an old wound, but we put about eight thousand dollars into all sorts of surveys and whatnot and legal advice to attach to the county. Is that completely a, a no-go issue now? Like, is it, is it? Are we done even trying to negotiate that with them? $8,000 was a boundary survey that right. the county wanted just to prove that the town had the rights to that. But I mean, are, and that's, and done, are we and done, that's already done. Everything are we too. done, though, trying to yeah. negotiate connecting to the sewer? Or? It's 
it's cheaper yeah. to build right. you, just to put it in and we would have done. to pay for the operation of our portion of the county sewer plant yeah. this is I a mean, better that would be ongoing forever without the sales this is, tax you're not know what it's doing yeah <laughs> so this is if we, can, if we can pull this off this is Thank a, you. this is a pretty inexpensive way to get something done that's going to be a great asset to this community and to recreation for this community okay, okay so, so uh, do you think it would cost more than twenty thousand no dollars? No way. Not with Chris Marks and Mr. Cloud. No, but this. we have we to have actual bathrooms, right? Oh, it's be well, everything is everything is there. We just have to. You have to actually just buy the toilets. Yeah, it's already there. It's already. It's already. It's already. It's already oh, okay. Uh, you have to have a water system, and I got to find out more about the well, Chris. The use it. We have water. It produces enough. I haven't even heard what the yield is on it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and they, the, will the they let us too, use though. vault toilets, or the county's not letting anybody do that now? And, and the hope is actually, and again, not to speak to revenue, but there is revenue that would be generated in the tournaments out of the, out of the concession stand. And if we can right. get the water and sewer, we can have concessions, a real concession stand. I'm not saying the one at Morello mm -hmm. Pool is not, but it would be a concession stand that would support the water system would be a public water supply mm -hmm. and it would take a UV system on it I mean it it's not mm -hmm. it's not not real and cheap but it's not complicated and just UV UV UV. 900 bucks you're gonna have to chlorinate plus UV but not and not to complicate anything um I won't complicate things right now. Okay. But I think this will be more useful all right. for all this anyway. So I think so, we can go back okay, to so can we go back to the original motion. motion that what we're gonna do is so the first motion motion I did and I can do it together or separate if you want to amend it. The first motion was to authorize purchasing the pavilion and then I was gonna ask for a separate motion to authorize Dave to do the protest. Okay, so let's so, go on the first one. Okay, so um um, um so um, the motion was to um um, buy, the pavilion. buy the pavilion for twenty-one thousand oh nine. No sales for tax. For no sales tax from Unidale laminated products. Aye. Aye. We need to do this for recreation. Come on, guys. It, We've invested you're, you're so much to the money out there. You say anti-recreation is barely a sport. I have not. No, I understand that, but we've already but we've invested so much uh, money out there that it's like insane not to just go, you know, to to do what we need to do to make it better. But again, no, it's the it's the ongoing cost. This, this, it's just this, that every town I've been in. This, this is up there with the. the <laughs> okay. I mean, I can take you to towns. Okay. I can take you to towns in upstate New York that have beautiful ice skating rinks too. I mean, I, I've been in them and I, I've, I've skated in them, and they're beautiful. But, it's you, the, you know what, Jeff? Okay, but I, I can say I can say on the other side, and I, it's why you know we put a lot of rec money into Memorial Pool, and there's a lot of people in the town outside the village who have their own pools that don't benefit from that. God, and God, so, God so. And you know what? In in five years, Memorial Pool probably. It won't be operable anymore anyway. Oh, so, shh. So a lot of no, don't say that. No, no. Chris Mark. So, so, no, don't say that. Chris, tell her. Gonna, we got another long time. Everyone over to the house, we can dive in a pond in the back. <laughs> so I will. Is that an I? Reluctantly <laughs> vote yes, but I want it in the resolution as a reminder that there will be no nighttime lighting mm -hmm. at this park site. Well, you site. can't. It's in the contract for recreation. I it's, it's also in the contract with the county, if I remember, too. As yeah, often it is. as possible. That, that's and fine. I, I because will, we're talking about suddenly weddings fine. and parties. And, and, and I will vote I and just... Kevin and I will be meeting we'll with do every do civic do organization. Do oh, that's fine. Kevin, you have two more years. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to set up. And we're going to. And we're going to. And we're going to set up our recreation committee. We're going to move forward. So all in favor? Motions uh, are uh, carried. Yeah. Okay. So I, I now. I move that we authorize the, the town to spend up to sixteen hundred dollars to retain Mr. Clauser's services to, to do perk tests that may be necessary to install private septic. Um, um, I'm sorry, can we just go back for one second? I just, with, with the motion we just made for the pavilion, the money's going to come out of the, um, the Park Land Reserve Fund. Right. And, Which has uh, a balance of $81,000. Right. And, um, and with this particular motion, too, I think if, I think we could take the money out of that also, right, to pay for Dave's time because this is part yes. of... Uh, yes. So, yes. So make the motion to, uh, yeah. let's say, to come out of the reserve. The Park, Park Land Reserve Fund. Park Land and, Reserve Fund. Right. Okay. I would like to second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion so carried. Okay, thanks guys. Um YMC time before. Okay, so let me just wait, let me just double check if there is anything else we need day for or if um and I have to just also compliment uh, 
our highway superintendent, Chris Marks, who's now also our building grounds guy, because our ability to do all these things for the community at such a reduced cost is astronomical based on his ability and willingness to take all these projects on, and we could not be doing this without him. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Really, we Chris, do appreciate you. it. We do. And okay. I do want to thank Chris also. I've been down at the pool each weekend open, and oh, yes. they cannot speak more than highly of you, and I cannot tell you how nice it looks, the park in between the upper and lower lots absolutely looks like a park. That's and it is, and the, it is beautiful. And actually, when I was down there on Sunday, sa Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, there were actually two families having picnics down in that park area, which I don't think I have seen probably for 25 years, people actually right. picnicking we had yeah. water it was in, 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 in an area that was actually designed for picnicking. So I know some will complain of the rocks that are blocking their egress up the hill and yeah. illegal they parking. They try to wiggle the cars through. Yeah, through it gets interesting. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, uh, it is all worked, and thank you so much because it, it is working very he's well. He's done an astounding job. You know what? I just would like you to ask you guys to just do one more motion, which is to accept. Um, <laughs> why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we concretize this by you guys accepting um, oh, the donation from? Um, from the Baseball Association for the purposes of the, um, the slab for the pavilion. Let's go. And the, now, when they we say slab, that, that slab I, and footing? I got a preliminary yeah. cost on yeah. it. I yeah. called today. Um, I just called one contractor, uh, Smith Brothers, put in a, uh, a pad 40 by 60, 5 inch thick, 4,000 psi, formed, poured, power troweled with the wire was $11,000. Now there's an extra cost on this, um, putting in 16 sonitudes. Sonitudes are what the piers are going to lie on, uh, the, the, the uprights. Um, that was uh, five yards of concrete, and that was something that uh, builders and grounds will do. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. set the piers, we'll set the pylons, we'll pour the concrete. The 11K includes the footings, or does not? Well, there's not footings per se. There's um, a slab still has. Just, no, it's, it's just a regular slab, five inches. The, the footings will be the sauna tubes that go five okay. feet in the ground that the actual structure goes And can on. you do the site prep or? We'll, we'll do the site prep, um, but they're going to set up the forms. The stone? Yeah, they'll, we'll, we'll have a spec from them. We'll do all the, the leveling. We'll put in the forms and we'll put in the uprights. And then they'll come in and finish okay. the slab. So why don't we why don't we accept this for now, and then once you get the cost, we can always go back to Mike. I think they might be able to make it, bring it up to the eleven thousand. But this let's is accept. Also a prevailing wage. Cost, uh huh. So. Okay. So, so now, if they do it, we still have to do prevailing wage and everything, Dave. Yeah. yeah. It's so municipal there, project. Is there a motion to accept that? Yeah, that's what I asked you to do that. So yeah. Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion so carried. I'm going to give you this, Rosanna, so you have it for the record. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. So. Um, I don't think we need Dave for anything else. Dave, okay. thank you very much. Dave, thanks so much, so much, so much. Okay, so um, what, why don't we do Stacy's car before we get onto the contracts, and then we'll talk about the letter to the governor. Um, Stacy was called out to, you guys all got it, right? You got it, I'm okay with it. Yeah, and okay. it's, a, uh, it's, it's a proof of no good deed goes unpunished. unpunished. So the question is um, just so she was sorry, so she was so covering for Well, why don't you explain yeah. just so the public knows what we're doing? Uh, you can, yeah, you got it. Dave. Okay, yeah. so basically what ended up happening was um, on um, the eve of April 25th, 2013, our building inspector was called by the fire department and the police department to respond to an incident on Main Street. Apparently, she well, she actually used her own car. So apparently, at some point during the incident, her car was vandalized. It appears someone keyed the passenger rear door. Fortunately, she was parked next to Officer Carpinelli, who proceeded to process a report and took photographs. Carol Connolly immediately sent the information to the town's insurance agency, see the efficiency of my assistant, who notified me that the damage was not covered under the town's current policy, and that I should report it to my own insurance company. And as much as this is a brand new car and the leased vehicle, the damage needs to be repaired. I'm respectfully requesting the town um, give consideration um, to assume the cost of repair to the damage of my vehicle. I would receive no relief from my personal insurance company because my deductible is $500. And then she gave us all the stuff, and I guess the cost to repair it, I think, is $600. It's like $604.26. So, um, 
of course I think it's our responsibility. The only decision we should make after this is whether or not we should be telling her to take the town car home since she is in position to have to respond and uh, make that determination. But why don't we deal uh, with this I, first? I think a bigger, and then we'll, uh, we'll do, the, the bigger discussion is, is we need to have come up with a personal use right. policy right. and yeah, right. Right. It, it not authorizing another vehicle to leave the premises, but that's a different discussion. Okay. So, so I, I make that. a motion that uh, the town uh, reimburse Stacy for the amount over her deductible. Second. The 604.26. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion so carried. Okay, so that's that. So now, bye Dave, thanks so much. Thank you Aye. Dave. Okay, so we have the YMCA contract Dave, and the bus driver you. contract to approve. Um, and if they did not change it from no, I don't last think year, no, nope, I, I went through it. It was the same yeah. contract as last year's, and, and I went and I went in because when I read the contract, I didn't remember um, actually being in the budget that we paid for Lenape, and so I went back and I checked the budget, and we absolutely do have money in the budget yeah. for the um, for. Um, and we paid for the school. I didn't realize. I didn't yeah. remember that for some reason. I knew we paid for the enhanced programs. Yeah. I know we paid for the school. The only so thing that was included last year, which I didn't see here, but I guess they will forward it to us, is the names of the bus drivers. Yeah. Well, and okay. Well, let's do the YMCA contract. Yeah. So we're going to get to that. Oh. So anyway, with the YMCA contract, no, it wasn't changed. I did double check yeah. that yes, indeed, we did pay for the uh, um, for the rent for the bus drivers and for the mileage, and school. that's all in the budget. Yeah. So, so I, I move that we authorize the supervisor to execute the recreation transportation agreement. No, no, we're doing the YMCA contract. Oh, the YMCA. Uh, so just say the same thing. We're doing the YMCA, YMCA. Don't the YMCA do contract. What's it dated? Um, Should it be dated? No, I think it's dated. Uh, well, they, it's a. The board of directors, uh, you can just do it today because they um, haven't started. The YMCA contract, the she, they had to, the, 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 this agreement made us the 16th day of April 2013. But that was the, that was the, uh, when uh, I got it. That was the Y board approved it. Right. Yeah, they didn't send this to you then. Right. You have that? We called up to get it. Yeah, they have they to send this to you in April. They, they just right. got this to you. So, right. authorized supervisor to sign the YMCA contract in the form provided. This is second. second. All second. in favor? Aye. Okay, motions are carried. Okay, then for the um, bus, the bus thing, we can approve the contract. You can offer me, rise me to sign the bus contract. They sent over a list of the personnel, but they didn't send over the rates. So we so can do that next week. The, we're going to have the same rate structures last year, right? I suspect, unless the contract with right, their so contract we'll changed. Well, no, we'll do the bus contract tonight, and then we'll approve the personnel next week when they give us the, all the people with the actual rate. Move to authorize the supervisor to execute the recreation transportation agreement dated June 5th, 2013. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Motion so carried. So um, everyone knows too, though, uh, out in public that the uh, the schedule will be the same. I apologize. Uh, I believe it's June 24th and August 16th are going to be the start dates. Uh, it'll be second. two. Uh, it'll be, excuse me, it'll be four two-week camp sessions that run between the 24th and uh, August 6th. Uh, the cost for the same is $200 per two-week session for residents living within the municipal boundary of the town of New Paltz, and 230 for two two-week sessions for those living outside the municipal boundary of the town of New Paltz. Uh, they will have before and after camp care at the following rates. Uh, before $55 per two-week session and after $55 per two-week session, or you can do before and after for $90 per two-week session. That's reasonable. Um, and it is the same, they're holding the same rates that they did last year. They have not That's increased great. their rates. And uh, they'll also be including transportation to and from Lenape Elementary to Moriello Pool three times per week. Uh, so uh, not only is this being uh, subsidized by the town for the use of the pool, uh, because it is a town program, so they will be using the pool uh, being subsidized, but we also give, I believe in our budget, can you help, $10,000? $10,000 also the town is paying to subsidize this program to keep the rate as reasonable as possible. Okay, great. So now um, we have um, Kitty had asked us to um, draft a letter to the governor in, <laughs> and I just have to say, Kitty, when I read the letter, <laughs> did you see me biting my tongue? No, no, no. I, it's oh. like, uh, what, 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 what really got to me was please accept this letter to the governor Cuomo. Please accept our invitation to attend the town hall meeting here in New Paltz, yeah. so that we can discuss ways to make New York State the most business-friendly state in the nation. 
I had to laugh about the invitation to the governor to come to a meeting of a, well, anyway, more importantly, no, no, no. He, he will send some. No. Let me just, let me just um, say that while I appreciate you putting this letter together, it doesn't matter, it passed yesterday. Um, so the tax free has already passed. It's already passed the assembly. It already passed the senate. We already uh, what talk I started New York. Track, huh? uh, talk about a fast track. And did so, you guys see the weekly newsletter? Well, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. That well, weekly he sent it, the, his weekly. I don't know if you guys read. Oh, I get we, we get it in your. It's in all your mail. But right, it's a I get it. Weekly newsletter yeah. and it counts that this is the rebuilding of upstate New York and he's saving upstate New York from itself. It may be true that that's the case because he had companies like East Minnesota that employed a lot of people. Uh -huh. And it just, it's just a, it's a great example of the company doesn't change with the times. They run business very quickly. But what he needs to do is figure out a way to subsidize the community. Well, this is what I'd like to, and this is really interesting, and I'll just, um, because I was at the tax-free, um, I did go to the tax-free announcement by the governor, and I um, actually <laughs> had written after I found that I was going up to one of the governor's assistants to say, um, to say you might want to give the governor a little heads up before he comes to New Falls about coming and announcing a tax-free zone, and then proceeded to tell him about Park, you know, wrote into this email to the governor's person about Park Point, how contentious it is, how we feel about, you know, property off the tax rolls, how much is already off the tax rolls, um, you know, the cost to the police to downtown because of the, you know, the college and the problems that we would have with Park Point relative to the impact on the community, and that he needed to understand that before he walked in. Um, the next morning at 8.30 in the morning, I got a call from his office. I was at a doctor's appointment. I got a call from the head of the Democratic um, um, County Committee. I got a call from Legislator Rodriguez. They were trying to track me down for four hours. So at 11.30, I called back to the governor's assistant, who's a rep here, and explained the situation. And um, so I made them very aware before they came to our community. And um, then after the announcement, I spoke to many people there to explain why in New Paltz we might not consider this a really good idea, and also explain that it was my understanding that our town, prior to us coming on, that you had actually, um, in your master plan, talked about creating um, commercial around the college as a way to get more um, rateables around the college, and that you're taking well, our rateables off the go. Well, well, wait a second. This kind of does what you want to accomplish, but the plan has to be. Well, this is what I'd like to suggest. This it is what I'd does like to create great opportunities to bring manufacturing back into this country, and a lot of other businesses back into this country that have been gone to various countries. I mean, there's a rumor that Apple Computer wants to build a huge fab south of Albany. I don't know how it ties into this, but a billion, ten billion dollar fab would certainly employ some of those 700 IBMers mm -hmm. that were laid off. <laughs> the bottom line, though, is they have to fine tune it. So the communities like well, this is what, what this is what I'd like to suggest, and this is what I, I I suggested it. Then when I was fortunately at the Women's Equality Agenda announcement, I talked to somebody from the Department of Labor there and said what I thought about this, and he said it was a great idea. And um, so what I'd like to do is, since it's already passed, I don't think this letter is appropriate. But what I'd like to do is maybe suggest that we write a letter. Um, and we can do a couple of things. I think we need to write a letter saying that, um, and if you want to say we support this, I don't know if I do or don't, but we can talk about that. But I think what we need it's to really basically is, what we need to basically I say is. I can't understand why anybody would think it's a good idea. Really, just after the historic failure of the IDA, <coughs> IDAs and well, the economic I'm not talking about that zone, piece. the tax free part of it. I'm not talking about that piece. Oh. I'm talking about what he's trying to create, which is a great idea where you take your universities. If you think about the whole educational system right now, he could use this initiative to revamp the whole system. Right now you have, you have kids going to a four-year high school program. I can tell you from my own experience, you know, maybe some of those juniors and seniors should be in a kind of a different environment instead of that old structured high school environment. If you could bring in like an Apple computer, so maybe instead of doing your junior and senior year at the high school, the building itself, you're now working in the fab or working for Apple computer because they're located off the campus. I, you bring your I college get the students. Vision. It's I, a great I vision. I see the vision. The tax-free part of it, Kitty, I'm with you. 
But we can't we can't continue to provide the infrastructure. Well that's why that's why I'm suggesting that's that's why I'm suggesting the problem. Somebody else has to pay for it. That's why I'm suggesting. Okay, but I'd like to suggest he's planning that we pay for it. He's planning no he's paying no the plan no no. The plan is that we that that well, okay. So what I'd like well, to suggest, gonna, gonna okay, what I what I said to somebody from the Department of Labor was I said, look, if you, you know, you know what you need to do to get buy-in to an extent is at least the state has to do a pilot back to the local community to pay for the emergency services so it doesn't come back to the local taxpayers for 20 years for a program that the state is implementing and then putting it back on our shoulders to pay for the emergency services that are going to cost us as a taxpayer to have this so what i'm suggesting is that we um that if you want to write a letter that we write a letter saying a to the governor that if this should be implemented, at least in New Paltz, that you would hope to understand that we would like to have um, um, the emergency service paid for. But I, and I don't know legally, I'd have to check this out, you know, because state law supersedes, but I would love for us to tell our college president that, um, or, you know, have the board say to the president, if you're going to consider anything tax free off the campus, that you need to negotiate a payment in lower taxes with the town on behalf of this before you accept it, as town gown, you know, you know, as a part of a town gown relationship with the community. So somehow, I mean, I, you know, look, it's over, it's done. There's nothing we can do now. We have to do. We have to do the next step to make sure if this should happen well, that we're protected. The I, best way to do I'm that, I don't sure know. That, uh, this part of it is done, but the right. actual implementation and what this creature is going to look like, I, I, I think we really do need to speak up quickly to our very responsive assembly person <laughs> and um, <laughs> and just, you know I, they just need to get the picture that we already have such a tiny tax base and it's not just the expense to our emergency services what I'm really worried about is if these things are built and they come say we get 250 of the best employees you could possibly get who will be not paying income tax under this new law. Um, and just say 100 of them have children who need to go to our school. Um, they're going to look at our property taxes, which are going to be so high because of all of the other infrastructure we support. None of them are going to live in New Paltz, right? So they're going to live in the surrounding towns that are just close enough to be in our school district, you know? Yeah. So, and um, a direct impact on the property value. And huge, huge. huge. And so they have to, con well, um, it gets they worse have to contribute. Yeah, but it, and it's going to get worse, too, because now we're going to have the casinos are approved. And yeah. now, now you're going to have a casino. <laughs> and, and I'm not trying to pick on communities outside of ours, but you're going to have casinos being developed that are going to get huge pilots. Mm -hmm. They're not dumb. They're going to get, you know, it's now is Ellenville in terrible straits? Could they use a casino outside their community? Absolutely. But who's paying for it? Casino workers have kids. All those casino workers, yeah. and they are going to get huge, I mean, huge pilots, and we're going to end up paying for that in the Hudson Valley. Can I, can I just All read the governor's good news? <laughs> Startup New York will foster entrepreneurism and job creation on a large scale by transforming public higher education. Public higher education. We need to pay the educators through tax-free communities. <coughs> so we're going to pay more professors to create more educated people, but nobody's going to pay the taxes to pay these professors. I, the, did anybody in the governor's office read that whole sentence? I will say that the SUNY college education cost is very reasonable for, for education. I when think you compare they're going to have to start cutting faculty well, because nobody's going to be able to afford to pay. When you compare it to a high school education, it's cheaper. <laughs> That's, okay. That is true. That is true. I don't know. I'm going to eat some kids in the SUNY system right now. It's I'm not, not too bad, Jeff. <laughs> no, but, 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 <laughs> but you're also still paying for your local. Right. Okay. So why don't we work on a letter? Okay, so, 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 okay. so uh, why don't, uh, I'll work with Kevin. We'll try to work with we'll, 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 We're going to ask the state to pay for an analysis of the impacts going to have on the ball. 
Cool. And we'll figure, so Kevin and I will work on a letter and we'll hopefully have it back next Thursday. Okay. Uh, okay, so if that's okay. Good. Okay, so the only thing now that we have left before, Kitty has asked that we go into executive session for the purposes right. of contract. Um, so do you want to- We need um, to do the warrant. You can go do the warrant in the minutes. Um, oh. Oh, bike pad, oh, I forgot about that. If you want to do a, we had um, two resignations and we were asked to adopt two new people and I think uh, you guys got everything. Um, uh, we generally do interviews. Well, not usually, um, for commissions, we do interviews for committees. I double checked this before we came because I asked the same exact question, right. Kitty, and my assistant who has read the town codes here and there and everywhere always has the answer. Um, she said, for commissions, yes, for committees, you usually take the recommendation of the, uh, of the um, chair of the commission, of the committee. So, I'm more than happy with that unless you want to do the interview, but uh, we, we don't have to. We interviewed all the other members of BikePad, but if, if well, uh, uh, It's up to you guys. I'm prepared to accept Bill Weinstein's recommendations, but if you guys want to do an interview, that is up to you. So why don't we first accept the, um, why don't we first accept the uh, resignations, okay? Um, and actually, I think I have all the copies of everybody's resumes and stuff, or letters. Do you guys have copies? If not, I have I Carol made copies of, I think she did too, but she also yeah. made copies because oh, it was the last minute. No. So, oh, these are the resumes for the people they want, and the, okay, so there's two people. Can you, you got that one, yeah. and, this, and this one? Daniel Lipson, okay. everybody got Daniel Lipson. You got that and that? And then, did you get it, Rosanna, or do you need uh, you, got, you got Pam and Daniel, right? Yep. Okay, so these are for you. The resignations are supposed to be filed, me too. Okay, well, we did the resignations, so I'm just handing you. So, um, this one is from Clark Peasley. Dear Susan, this notice um, to make my official re this this notice to make official my resignation from the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee of New Pulse. I've enjoyed three years of service there, and now I need to focus on other things, most particularly growing my business. Thank you, Clark Peasley, and his term expired 12:31:14. Um, would somebody like a motion to accept uh, the so resignation? Moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second, and very sorry that they're yeah. resigning. And thank you for all your work. And a letter's already been sent to them, uh, thanking uh, them. Thanking, yeah. Okay. okay. He's so a good friend and neighbor. Yes. Okay. So all, right. all in favor? No, so the motion was made with regret, but with understanding. So we have a motion to second. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's uh, my understanding. I think a letter already went out, thanking, mm -hmm. thanking. So that's this one. And then who is the other one that? Um, okay. Um, Okay, and then this one's Jackie Andrews. Good day, the message is to communicate to you that I've relocated and have constantly withdrawn membership into the Bicycle Pet Committee of the Town and Village of Newport's effective July 1st, 2013. I've enjoyed my membership on the bike pit and have faith that it will continue the good work of making Newport's more amenable to the citizens who are not, for many reasons, in an automobile. Thank you, Jackie Andrews. So would somebody like to make a motion to accept her? So moved, thank you, Jackie. And the second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, we also accept her resignation with regret. Regret and her term expired 12-31-13. So the question is whether you want to do about the, um, there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm good too. Right, so both of these two. have been recommended by, by Bill Weinstein, uh, okay. the chair of the, uh, well, um, and I guess one would have to fill out the unexpired terms. They've and the actually other would said who they want to okay. fill out the terms for. Okay, so well, I, I think we're very lucky to have somebody with experience in laser vaporization, ablation, disruption, using metal and semiconductor substrates <laughs> on our bike ped committee. And, and also just to show too that they got their they got their education from uh, Stony Brook soon. Yeah. And then went out to a system that truly built one of the greatest state systems ever, which would be Madison. California. Oh Cal 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 California Wisconsin. California built okay. probably one of the mm -hmm. best. The uh, other guy went to Madison. Okay, yeah. well, anyway. All right. Okay, so. Um, so I make a motion that we ex uh, appoint Pamela St. John to fill out the rest of the term uh, vacated by Clark Peasley. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, motion so carried. And that we appoint Daniel Lipson to fill out the unexpired term of Jackie Anders. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Okay, motion so carried. Uh, also, okay. while we're at it, and I will draft a letter for next week if you guys are interested, uh, just because I'm also a biker and they're having a lot of issues on 
uh, 208 of infect, of which I almost had a bad spill on there. Yeah, cause that's right before my house, and oh well, no, even worse. Uh, 208, uh, right where you come down from uh, Edgewood, Bobby's Lane, yeah, uh, by Spagolas. Yeah. Uh, they did some repairs there, and then they created a very large. Uh, there actually is no shoulder, shoulder any longer, mm. and it's very, very dangerous. So uh, Bill had actually sent me a couple letters and some communication. So you guys want, I can draft the letter for next week for the board to also send to the DOT and also to uh, to Albany, which is strange. It's aviation and highways you send it yeah. to. Yeah, it's well, actually kind of interesting okay. who you send them to. Why don't we send pictures when you see Bill's has, why don't we send all the pictures, pictures yeah. of all those injuries? I mean, I, I, I mean, literally. Bill's letter was yeah. pretty good. I mean, literally tonight, I almost wiped out coming down that hill. Oh, oh, this right here, Stewart's Bridge. Yeah. After being told that we were told that they were going to expand right. Stewart's Bridge. Can we build a plank across the interior section of that? <laughs> <laughs> right, <God. laughs> Look at Chris. Look at Chris. Chris doesn't do so much like already. Planks, <laughs> like a piling plank, like a little bridge that people can. To walk even there with cars passing is dangerous. All right. Why don't they walk over the that bridge and up and down the town walk? I mean, by Stewart? It's just, it's really scary. And actually, I mean, by, believe it or not, by, not even believe it or not, by law, you're not allowed to be riding your bike on sidewalks unless you are going directly to and or from a business or a residence. So if I'm going out 32, I have to ride my bike onto the sidewalk, which is actually breaking the law, and then ride it all the way up the hill. Or I have to dismount and then walk my bike up and over and well, then remount. All I can remount. say is anytime you do anything on a state road, you're probably looking at six months worth of engineering, phone calls, so we have people trying to put in the bus yeah. shelter. Uh, I, will, I will draft the letter for next week. <laughs> okay, so great. Need someone to get hurt, too. Okay. Right? Yeah. Well, you do know that, you do know that in, in order to put a traffic light someplace, three people have to die before they'll put a traffic light in? That's insane. That's insane. I didn't have that. Yeah. That's in three state codes. In state, uh, in state, if you want to get a traffic light someplace, oh there has to be three deaths before they'll put it in. And that's why you answer, and you know what, and that's why they got the light out by the um, gas station so in Lloyd, going out there by the head station, because mm -hmm. it was a couple of horrific accidents. Remember, two sisters got killed right before Christmas. So those two sisters were there. Okay, so now we have to do the budget. We have the um, budget modification, we have the warrant, and we have minutes. And we have the minutes. So we want to do the budget modification first. Go ahead. So the budget modification, I need somebody to move. Um, one is to establish, um, to create an expense and revenue line to modify the 2013 budget for the reimbursable canine grant that is awarded to the police department. Now we have a canine line. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know why I didn't move my budget, I always do. We have a canine line already for canine donations. Right. This, I think this is because this is the grant. So it's actually, so it's managing the grant. So it's specific to a grant that we just got? Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess for a grant you could start a new line, right? Yeah, I mean. It's probably better to have, uh, not, have it met, you know, not, not have it mixed up with, um, with the donations, the money we get there and where's stuff. Our, this is. Where's our person that takes way too many classes in budgeting? She's not uh, here tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, there's probably a good reason for it. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so I make a motion that we create an expense and revenue line for the 2013 budget for uh, a reimbursable canine grant in the amount of $5,000. Second. Any discussion? discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Motions are carried. I also make a motion that we increase the expense and revenue lines for CHIPS revenue, uh, which is the Capital Highway Improvement Program money the town receives annually. Uh, we have budgeted 90000 but it received notification of towns. Uh, we'll be getting 118000 so we will be getting a bonus of $28,000. Thank you, Chris. Somehow you were involved in that. I'm not sure how, but thank you anyway. Uh, so I make a motion that we uh, increase the uh, revenue line of DB 9803501. Oh, I'd like to second. Okay. And, Any discussion? Uh, no. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motions are carried. And you've got ways that you're going to come to us with uh, to expend that money, but this year or Possibly. too late? There's a too late already. Take it easy. No. Easy. Right. Oh, yeah. No, he can. He's got plenty of roads he can three, work on. Three projects which are almost done. So. 
I think so. If you need after those projects, too. Well, you got twenty-eight thousand bucks extra. <laughs> okay. Um, next is to do the warrant. Do I have a motion to accept the warrant? I'll move to accept the warrant in the amount of it's, uh, the June warrant, correct? Right. Four hundred thirty-six thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars and twenty-two cents. All right. And do I have a second? Read from page one total. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Oh. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motions are carried. Um, and then the minutes. Um, April 26th, well, we have, I have 26th, May 16th, and May 23rd. Yeah, I know, but but uh, I think they did theirs and we didn't do it. So we have, oh, okay, because the three minutes that I have is the 23rd, the 16th, and the 26th. Okay, so you want us to put that one aside? Okay, okay. Um, April 25th. Well, that one I didn't see then. That, remember what I asked you about the three? <laughs> oh, there's still three. No, well, I had, I had, okay. So I didn't have the 25th, so I have to look at that real quick. It's not, uh, the parks, uh, just going up with the Fortis. What happens now with that guy that we hired? Is that just dead well, in the water? We, well, we got a better deal because of it. That's okay. when we that first sent it to the planning board. But September. We're not doing yeah, no, I, but we don't have the one we're looking at now. Um, you can look at these, but the one we're doing now, I don't have. Um, this is town water system. I thought actually we had done this one. We haven't done April. You sure did because I yeah. thought I added. Uh, okay, but I, don't I have did April read it. Twenty six here. Okay, but I did read it because um, just go down. Well, when you get done, this is April twenty fifth. Because I know. Okay. Um, Do you have the twenty fifth in front of you, you guys? I, I didn't okay. There's some good ideas in here. I know. You know? Like uh, we were going to invite um, Bill Russell to come and talk about another playground between here and Royal Pool. That was okay. well, actually, I talked to Ch I, I did talk to Chuck about that again, and um, but we can talk about it another time. Okay, so okay, we so joined really the consortium. I right, so keep going all in there. Royal Pool bump 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 Here's all of our our lifeguards. Okay. Okay. Twenty four agreement. Yeah. First line dedication. Save all to the Lord. Like everything's pretty okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm okay with it. Okay. Then this is where we corrected uh, the minutes from. Right, right. All right. Okay, so, so um, April 25th, I make okay. a motion that we accept those minutes. Okay. Second. Okay, um, any discussion? All in favor? Motion so carried. Okay, then um, Kevin's got the other ones. There was only one little change, Kevin, I had to make on one. Um, on, um, okay, April 26th, I have no problems. Oh, it was actually, it was a joint one that there was just one change. So April 26th was basically all our personnel meetings 
for when we were doing right. interviews for the bookkeeper, so um, of which uh, Councilman Logan took copious notes at each one of those meetings. So do I have a motion to accept the April 26th, May 2nd, May 9th special meetings for personnel when we were interviewing the bookkeeper? I think, yeah, and I think all of us were at those. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, I Second. left early for one okay. of them. Well, okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. motions are carried. And then um, May 23rd, um, that was when we did the um, uh, um, the municipal stormwater, the, up, yeah. the, M the, town pr the town map, the website, blah, blah, blah. So do I have a motion to so accept? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? I just need to, is that the one where Jeff and I voted no? Yes. yes is. is that in there? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's in there. Okay. It's in there. Okay. Okay. Um, well, actually, it was a different one that you voted. No, yeah, I think it was the 23rd. It was the 23rd one. I thought it was in the 16th. Oh, okay. It is definitely in there that you voted no. I remember looking at. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Okay. Motions are carried. Okay. So I think we're done with everything except for the fact that Kitty requested we go into executive session for contract negotiations. So. Um, do I have a motion to go to executive session? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. I guess we can sign off because we're probably not going to take any action tonight. So thank you very much for joining us and have a good night. And Rosanna, you don't have to stay. Either. We'll just. Uh, <laughs>